No, Eric, can you just I mean, come like, and fix the couch? I mean, like, the couch can you please broken. come fix the couch? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I'm I broke it because I'm a thank giant. You, thank is, you. I got this. I got this. Do you have? Thank you. No, I think I'm, that's actually that's making actually, it worse. I, I think that actually. I think that's making it worse. It, I, we need to. We're on the air. That's not thank what you that's for. Thank you for being patient with us, Amy. Oh. Thank you, Eric. Going? For. I'm, yeah, we just started. Oh. We, we've lost our intern son, so now Eric's doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Don't be mad. I love know you can ruin me. Welcome to the Wednesday Club. Uh, I'm Mary Gallon. This is Tellus and Jaffe. Oh, yeah, I'm Matt Key. Has anybody slept? This no. I, I, uh, ish? Great. I'm, You're in charge. Oh, what? <laughs> we should have an entire system a system of governments here, which is whoever has slept the most. Is, I just that want, means we have to log sleep out. I want to. I want to be run by narcolepse. That's oh. like, like just. I want people who just fall asleep. Narcolepsy. Yeah. A nar, a nar, nar, a narcolepsy. A, nar, a, a narcolepsy. A, na, a narcolarky. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't know. I hey, may, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Club. I'm Matt Key. Night. This is Talis, and that's Amy. I have yeah. eyeliner. It's great. I'm I am dad. actually <laughs> very excited because we are segueing from last week's discussion into mm. a, a deeper discussion of this amazing woman who unfortunately passed away quite recently. Very recently. But before doing so. Uh, was a huge and incredible part of comics. Her name was Marie Severin, and you are going to be just hearing stories about her for two years because everyone loved her and she was amazing. If, if I may, you know the story about like um, the, the the guys who discovered DNA, like Watson and Crick, is, is that yeah. their names, I believe? And how like... Rosalind Franklin. Yeah. Mm. Like, I feel like Marie Severin is the comic book equivalent of that scientist. You're like, oh, wait, you were also there, and by also there, I mean did the work. Yeah, uh, you were. You did the covers for, like, half of the Marvel comics in the early 60s, and, oh. There, there, there's a certain that's for, a lot. A Forrest Gump aspect of it, too, where I'm not, I've just discovered that she is, like, literally in the credits of every book for every job, mm -hmm. just bouncing. She's been colorist, letterer, uh, yeah. Yeah, she just literally did it all. She may have been editor in chief for a couple months at one point. Where no one knows. Probably no one really knows. Given her the title. Oh God, no. Uh, th that was an interesting thing. Marie Severin had a long and wonderful life in comics, uh, about which she seemed pretty happy and satisfied. So there, were, like, one of the things I was interested in going through this is that uh, there are points in her biography where I get mad on her behalf. Mm -hmm. And she generally describes herself as pretty satisfied with the way that things went down. And like. It is interesting because she, she was obviously way ahead of her time as a female artist, as a female comics contributor, uh, and she got to do a bunch of really great and interesting work. Uh, and, and there's just an interesting balance to be struck when you talk about sort of people with their role in history where, like, she talks, for instance, about, like, the, the Marvel offices where she landed uh, feeling, like, not necessarily one of the guys, but she wouldn't have wanted to be. And, you know, there was a separation there, but she was fine with it. And what's interesting is that simultaneously I feel like I owe it to her to do her the credit of believing her, uh, of sort of saying, like, yes, I'm not going to act like I know your experience better than you do, but I also can't forget that it's like, what choice did she in, have? In, in your mind, you're seeing, you're, you're seeing the Peggy Carter short from the first Captain America movie. Yeah. Right? Ah! knows her yeah. value, <laughs> and we know her value, and she was probably, oh, like, it, it is an interesting sort of uh, balance to strike, that, like, everybody describes her as happy and fun to get along with, but you get occasionally, like, one of my favorite parts in this wonderful book, which I leaned heavily on in, uh, it was, it's by Dewey Cassell and Aaron Sultan, they interviewed, like, everyone they could find who knew Marie Severin, this came out several years ago, um, and what I do love is occasionally other people in the book get mad on her behalf. Like, Ramita's like, and they never gave her my art director title. I don't know why. That was messed up. She was mad about it, he says at the time. Like, but I was in a different department and blah, blah, blah. And uh, anyway, before we get into the complaints, who was Marie Severin? Well, that's a great question. That's anybody. a great question. I, I mean, like, I could, I could, I could start throwing things out until such point as you picked up, because you know way more. Of, of, uh, I, I, I've got to. I actually, I'm going to come into this immediately saying that I was have never been somebody who's paid attention to who's been drawing my comics. There Same. are, there are. I'm, I struggled at like I pay attention to the writer. I pay attention to the writer. My own. And life. only in the last like few years have I started making like an honest to god attempt to pay attention to who's who's drawing my my comics. Yeah. And I know that's a it's a terrible failing. And I'm well aware of that. Uh, we all have to have a few, <laughs> um, or else we're we're not interesting people. But other than like a handful of artists who are really avant garde, um, I tended to just s sort of 
if I didn't enjoy the art, I would just sort of breathe deeply and go along with the good writing. Or if if it was a beautiful book that with the writing was very was not really captivating me, I would just take in the art and move along and just and enjoy it in that direction. So I'm only a couple years into my like trying to pay attention to who's drawing my books. Mm. Um, which is all leading to this is an amazing story of this. Uh, she was a um, uh, she she was an artist who came out of an artistic family. Uh, she went to Pratt for like five seconds apparently. That was interesting. <laughs> That's where yeah, my sister goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it really? Yeah, oh, my sister, nice. My sister was at Pratt, so. Uh, she and her brother apparently both kind of considered arts, John decided Stephanie, they wanted right? jobs, yeah. and uh, just stopped. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so and he, and she worked as like a bank clerk or something like that briefly. until her brother John was like, "By the way, there's some artwork over here at this EC place. If you want to give it a spin." And she, "Oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, it is what I want to do. At least that's all the descriptions that I read of that exchange was. I'm good at that. I should go do that. All right, cool. I'm gonna go do that. Bye, Bank World." And it is pretty inspiring that she says like she was raised in an artistic family and never got the message that girls weren't supposed to draw. Um, her her father was in fashion design, if I if, if I if I was, read. I believe he, according to this anyway, he did product design for Elizabeth Arden. Mm -hmm. So he That's was designing right. labels. He was, designer, he was designing yeah. like it was artist. It's what now would probably be like graphic design or, or like an associated job, um, which was artistic in nature, but uh, but not directly like illustrating or or putting art in galleries. And her mom, uh, sort of like did clothing design around the house and other stuff and sort of what had the, like a, an artistic temperament uh, uh, or, or she always talked about her mom's color sense. Um, mm -hmm. But they, yeah, so they grew up, they were both, she was born at the end of the 20s and John was born at the beginning of the 20s uh, and they grew up together in Long Island in Brooklyn uh, because a lot of comic books was determined by proximity mm -hmm. um, as Jerry was telling us about last week. Uh, which was super fun. It by was the so way. fun to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went. I went and read all of Infinity War. By the way. Oh yeah, it's so, so good. good. It's, it's so good. So good. It's ah. so fun. Uh, Got my while we're on picks. the topic of of last week, I, I want to show something off that I. Oh got. yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't want to distract from okay. Henry Severin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm and very excited. Do you have letters today? Because I forgot to ask. Uh, I, I also forgot to ask. I don't think that we do. Liz is telling me no. Is all that right, correct, Liz? Please. Yeah. No. Is yeah. You would have okay. told us. It's not my fault that, that the good clothes uh, are on Tuesday. I, I want I, I want to reiterate what I said to you I, to you guys via text uh, earlier in the week of mm. saying I can't wait to learn about Marie Severn from you. Like I did my best to to read as much about her as I could and everything, but like she is such so much more for like a, like you are like she's a hero to you, and I'm excited to learn at your feet. Mm. Uh, so, but on the subject of wait, wait, wait. last week. Wits in number four. Oh. Whoa! Uh, this is the first appearance of um, Steve Ditko's Mr. A, which is why I bought it. Ooh. But I thought it would be good for us to see what that Ooh. looked like back in the day and what Whoa. was influential. And, you know, it, I bought this for you guys, really, is what I'm saying. You're so selfless. Oh my God. This is, <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. So, Wits in was, of course, the magazine that we talked very briefly about Wally Wood very briefly, starting. Very yeah. briefly. Hmm? God, or Wallace Wood, or whatever we're calling Wallace, him. Wallace, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, Wallace Wood created Wits End. Is like it was sort of like I feel like it was the image revolution before the image revolution. It was no artists and writers should own the rights to their creations and come to me and we'll we'll publish whatever you want. Like it's kind of like image in the early '90s, you know. Or like the the, the black top. and whites of the '80s before there was a direct market to support them. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Oh, here's just poetry. Okay, I, I, I'm I'm sorry I'm not showing off too many of these. Some of these uh, some of these images are not uh, Twitch appropriate. It is mature. It is uh, mature content. But it is. I'm gonna find something that I can show. List off some of the contributors. Oh yeah, let's let's uh, let's take a look. Um, it's a little. Words it's, from Wood is the editorial. Oh how lovely. With a little cabin. Look at yeah. that. Oh, oh, I don't know why I went I went up up north. Um, Flash Gordon that is Nostalgia Press probably. Sorry. Wow, that's a whole thing. Um, this is actually their letter That's an column. Ad. Yeah, so this is, I love this, uh, this issue, and perhaps from now on, I have decided to dispense with editorial attempts to explain what this book is all about and get right to business. So it's issue four, and he's given up trying to tell you what this is. Yep. I don't know if there's a list of contributors in here. Is that? That's Frank Frazetta on the That's back. Frazetta on the back. Actually, you can show let's, that one off. Yeah. Let's show off. Hey, it's a Frazetta we can show. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you may, may on not the back recognize of it. the name Frank Frazetta, but you recognize his work. 
Uh, he is basically who you are probably picturing if you close your eyes and imagine, uh, you know, warriors fighting monsters. If you were yep. born in the late 70s to early 80s and had a, a friend who was not a stoner yet but was probably going to be after he turns 15, this was the art on his wall. <laughs> Uh, without a also, doubt. <laughs> if you've watched the He-Man documentary, he was one of the primary, primary. influences on the design of He-Man. Uh, and uh, oh a lot of heavy no. metal sort of has his feel. So, mm -hmm. oh, I want to show some of Mr. A really quickly because it has such a striking, and I think it's, it, this looks, I, want, I think the first page is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Not the, okay, here, we'll do, uh, do the one with the mask. The one. This is, I mean, like, it's such, double checking. Okay, yeah. It's such striking lines. Beautiful mm -hmm. deco. Uh, look at this, look at this beautiful, heavy. I love the way that the mask clicks on. It's just that whole mm -hmm. little image right there is so sharp. Uh, and what's fun about this is this is Ditko without an editor. So this is just, that is exactly I, what Ditko this, wanted to draw. Is this going to be around uh, the office? Yeah. He's drawing yeah. this one. I know, I'm really, I, I wish we could show this one. Is it, is you, could, you could take it home if you wanted to. Just copyright Wally it. would. But it's a cartoony oh, Pip, style. No, I don't Pip, know Pip Squeak Papers was one of his big things that he wanted to do that no publisher would let him do. Wow. That is wood, apparently. Yeah, Pip Squeak Papers is, is wood, and he had pitched that around town wanting to do uh. it, and they didn't want to do it. So he was like, well, screw you guys. I'm going to make Wits End and do it myself. Yeah, I definitely see a lot of, a lot of Wally, Wallace in there. It's very, very cute, but this lady's not wearing any Yeah, there's is definitely, the I'm not there's definitely Pip some. Pip Squeak Papers with you all. Sorry that you're just not, like watching us. Read this now. Sorry. Uh, Welcome to the Watch Us Read Things channel. Yes. Um, Watching people subscribe. watch Showtime. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Oh my God. Watch me watch HBO. <laughs> what is my button here that I'm looking for? There we are, Comixology. Uh, well, this is fantastic. Thank you so yeah. much for bringing this in. Yeah. You can borrow it, bring it home, bring it back. So I, I'm going to gently say, although I'm very excited about reading this, I am genuinely mm -hmm. really excited about reading this. I'm going to segue. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to segue do. on uh, on wheels uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, to to talk about uh, Marie Severin and. Uh, and maybe I should give the the, the the one sentence from last week that mm. that I'm I'm using now to explain Marie Severin that like in case you didn't see last week's show, uh, there are two bullpens in American comics that were probably the top two. I wish I could drop through a time machine and land there places of all mm -hmm. time. One was EC, EC. in the 50s, and like one was Marvel, Marvel in the 60s. And there was yep. one woman in both of them, and her name was Marie Sabre. Yeah, like 1966 Marvel bullpen and the 1952 EC bullpen. Like, you could, like, you cannot get more iconic than that. And, yep. And she, she started as a colorist and, and did the clever thing that some people figure out to do, which is that if you're in a place like that, is learn how to do every job at least, <laughs> at least adequately, if not better than the people who are doing it. Uh, and you can see that she became the person, and I, this is an assumption just from everything I've been reading, but I, I really feel like going back and looking at the work that she was doing, that she was the person who put out fires. Yes. There was an awful that lot of everybody like... Everybody says that about her. There was an awful... You, you, anytime you're reading a book and suddenly she's the inker. <laughs> <for laughs> two issues. And then on another book a month later, suddenly she's the penciler for three issues. And then you go to another book and suddenly she's the colorist for an issue. And it, you can you can tell that she is literally running around with pails of water by the time they mm -hmm. figure out that she can basically do all of it, ev everything. And some of my favorite books as a kid, I found out that she were I, I got to go back and reread, which is not nearly as good as I remember it. Although I'm still charmed by it, Fallen Angels. Oh, uh, do you remember Fallen Angels? I didn't read it. Oh, it's oh, it is such a child of the '90s, Mark mutant book. Like it's it's the it, it's okay. What's well, Fallen Angels? Oh boy. Okay, I'm hitting a button for this. Fallen Angels is a this is not a recommendation necessarily. This is more of a view into my reality. Um, Fallen Angels is a Marvel mutant book uh, from the, I want to say the 90s. I'm trying to find the button that, that will bring me to it because it has such an iconic cover. It was a mutant book, which was the nobody understands sun, on Sunspot, so he's going to run away and, oh, um, and uh, find a group of, of ridiculous, like not mutant, not anti-hero teenagers. It was back, there was a whole genre of, of of uh, uh, storytelling back in the 90s, which were runaway teenagers are cool. Um, it was, it, thankfully, it's a genre of that kind of died. Books fall squarely yeah. into that Squarely, path. squarely into it. And like, there, there are definitely, it was an eight issue miniseries. Um, I'm gonna show the cover, my favorite cover from it really quickly as soon as I get there. Um, yes. Yes. There we are. Yes. Wow. There we are, that's, that's, that's the stuff. Uh, a, what, what does it say on the cover there? It says, uh, 
of one moment of anger changed their lives forever. And yeah, Sunspot uh, and Warlock uh, both run away from oh, the New man. Mutants. I can't believe I didn't track this down. Those were all my faves. Uh, yeah, they, and she saved a couple issues of this apparently from from Near Doom, and you can tell when she like takes over and really. And there's Madrox the Multiple Man. Oh uh, man. There's uh, yeah. There's like it's a whole book about sassy street kids. Um, <laughs> with the worst costumes imaginable. Yes! Oh man, there are some costumes in here. Who there, is that? Uh, I'm trying to remember her name, and her name has nothing to do with her power. Her powers, she's got the power to open a door to anywhere. Is that? So, uh, it's not who you think it is. Um, although, if we go a little further, you're welcome to show it off if you want. It's not who you think it is. I don't think. It's like uh, I'll look it up. It's like Aura. They say it in a couple of panels. They're calling it? her Ariel, but it might be Ariel. Yeah. Although. Please enjoy. This it's extremely. There's a outfit. several. There's several costumes on this. Yeah. On this caliber. Oh wow. Um, it was a special time. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go a little further, they get into who everybody is. Um, and yeah, Siren and Madrox go out on a date. It's really adorable. Uh, go a little further. Yeah. Just roll. I think it's the next issue they introduce everybody. There's a Fagin-like character uh, who's kind of taking care of all the kids, but making them steal shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. Here we go. Uh, yeah. There's the. It's called the 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 Beats uh, the Beats Beat Club Street. Beat Street Club, where it's this uh, yeah little hideaway where all these kids who rob people with superpowers and like Boom Boom ends up there at some point because of she would have the Boomer. most toned down Tabitha yeah Tab yeah. Tabby would be the most toned. I mean down. I need them to be friends. Yeah, I, they they end up yeah like like that's a thing. <laughs> I knew you'd love that. I mean it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. There's and there's lobsters with psychic powers. I mean, why would there not be? It's, it's that kind of book. I can't justify my love of, yeah, you just found the, the two lobsters. That, that is a, yeah, this is, that is a lobster. <laughs> it's an intelligent lobster. <laughs> what is this book? Okay, Mar Marvel Mutant books got a little weird uh, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Um, we need to read this book. It's, it's really, it's, oh, it's man. It's, I wish we could do like a dramatic reading of this. Oh man, series. it's 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 a little it's a little self indulgent. But she she takes over uh, pencils for a while in this book because obviously Ooh, that's a beautiful panel. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, Madrox dancing his way back to a single solid form. So nice. All right, that's tango cool. tango down to one. All right, uh, well. tango to one. I am so now I, highly distracted. But you put this is an example of her probably putting out some fires behind. Oh, the scenes definitely it was because it was it was a book mm -hmm. that was it, that she hopped in onto and then hopped off of mm. very quickly. But it was I mean that and finding her work on comicsology was very difficult. <laughs> yeah, it was because she's a part of everything. Because she's a part of everything and and always a different part of everything. So I wanted to find I wanted to see her color That's work. I wanted to see her 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 um, uh, pencil work. Some of her writing work, which I did find, which I was quite pleased. Okay, I'm actually really glad that we ran into that uh, dancing himself back together panel mm. because I hadn't realized this is one of the issues she she's the guest penciler as yes. credited on this, um, and that falls into something I had never noticed, but that gets called out in this book. Uh, all the parts of the jobs that she did were incredibly valuable for getting comics out. Um, for a long time, they joked that she essentially was the production department. It was like her and mm -hmm. one other guy. Um, but as a comic book fan, we tend to take special notice if you are like actively the penciler of something and, and sort of wish that there had been more opportunity for her to have long, steady runs on things and develop signature styles. One of the things that they point out is that in the late 60s and early 70s, she did uh, sort of year-long runs on several different mm -hmm. books. Um, and one of the things that, did, that emerged as a signature of her uh, work, and I may have loaded up a picture of this. I have one handy here. But was the the transformation panel? Yes. Became oh, a yeah. Marie Severin trademark. You've seen it in a lot of comics, but it was something that was sort of distinctive to a lot of her work. She was on the Hulk for about a year, and really? showing in one uh, maybe year and a half. I'll look up the issues. Uh, in one panel, just do, doing the repeated face, the same way that we talk about the Steve Ditko Spider-Man half and half mm -hmm. being a very signature way of representing the duality of that character. Her doing that strobe. The yeah, strobe definitely has appeared in a bunch them, of stuff. Yeah, instead of splitting it up into multiple panels, having one panel with transformation that connects the two disparate elements mm -hmm. was like a, a recurring thing in a lot of her work. I would kill for a Sailor mm -hmm. Moon yeah. in that way. If, if oh. I may offer... I'm going to oh. find the actual oh. numbers yeah, here. One? 
I she's don't have transformation, but I do have something that falls in line with what you're talking about. Mm. I'm going to give the numbers on the on the Hulk run. Mm. It was 1967, uh, issue 92 of Tales to Astonish, uh, and she would continue with it when it turned back into the self-titled Hulk. We'll explain that in a bit. She stayed on it until uh, 106. She did breakdowns for Herb Trimpey, who would then take over. He he inked. Breakdowns means the sort of basic, basic version layout. of the art, um, as opposed to like full out pencils and then inks. Uh, and her, Herb Trimby penciled over the breakdown for that issue and then took over as the regular artist uh, because the way they put it is that she, like, the book had expanded to full length and she didn't have time to do all of her other jobs and keep drawing the Hulk. Mm -hmm. So Herb Trimby took over uh, and did what was then a legendary run on it. So what were you going to share? One of my favorite. Yes. Oh my God! I mean, like we had to go there. One oh. of my favorite Doctor Strange images of all time. I did not realize was by Marie Severin. Mm -hmm. So when you were like, "Hey, uh, we're gonna do Marie Severin," I was like, "I know I've seen her name with Doctor Strange." So I went and looked up which issue she's done. I was like, "Oh my God! She did the Living Tribunal." She's got creator credit on Living Tribunal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was yeah. Her first regular penciling gig. Yeah. She'd already been professionally yeah. in comics for about 15 years. Ish. Yeah. Uh, and someone had accidentally figured out that she could draw because sometimes you have to sit there being really good for 15 years before somebody uh -huh. goes, wait, but, uh -huh. but why wait. is she not doing this? Uh, so, so yeah, such an iconic character. Yeah. One of the, so, like, one of the one great. One of the most iconic characters from the Marvel Cosmic Universe. And I love that it's like, you know what? Why don't you take a spin at this Doctor Strange thing? And it's selling it like the kids like it. It's not selling as good as it could. We'll take a chance on you. Go ahead and do this. And then she's like, one of the greatest characters in your Marvel in your cosmic canon. This is great. Thanks for thank you so this much. Is, uh, <laughs> this is this is the character I want to see at the end of the next movie. Same. Like same. This is, I loaded so up this is what both an original and a recolored movie. version of this and a thing that draws from it. So we should show uh, well, every version. We're gonna show yeah. every version. Yeah. So this is oh yeah, it's still that. Okay. This is one of my favorite um, images of Doctor Strange ever. It may also be in the file, so if you guys uh, want yeah, to. it very well might be. What about nine issues of Doctor Strange? Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Okay, well, there's the oh my original. God, look at that. But like, oh. you know, the transformation thing, so here she's doing it with the Earth. It's a very similar like repetition of it. And what I think is interesting is it feels like um, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm -hmm. 20 years earlier. L later. What? I, I'm, no, no, I mean, this was, this was 20 years. What? No, this is about 20 years before Crisis on Infinite exactly. Earths. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, she, Sorry, she did I, it first. I thought maybe, yeah, she did it We're first. We're on the same page. Yeah, no. yeah I, I just got <laughs> confused by the adverbs, I believe. <laughs> Uh, I can tell you exactly which issues. Such an easy pun there, and I'm not going. They were on. So there's a recolored so, version of it in there too. That's the sort of full brightness. You can uh, pick your poison there, um, and there is one it's more. More of an EC Comics vibe. There's there's one more image in there related to this. Uh, do, did I don't remember what I labeled it, but it probably says Pink Floyd. Oh no. Oh man. Wait, yeah, what? That, that first appearance of Tribunal, even that is just like so great and iconic and wonderful. It's going to say, what was the. There Whoa. we go. This is the what? second Pink Floyd album. They stay, it's literally <laughs> clip art from that issue. There's, there was. Oh my God. The version is even clearer. I also loaded up both of those. I went a little nuts. Uh, oh but my it's God. Literally that page is this background of this montage from the second ever Pink Floyd album. No, yeah, like, the, and it's, this is it's literally One of this. the first things she ever, this is like the th third or fourth issue in that run of hers. Yep. Uh, that she did that. Which was just the like, oh man, we so, need uh, someone to draw this book. Also, here's one of the things that oh. I, I, I loved is that, uh, so Steve Ditko starts it in Strange Tales 110 around 63, 64, right? Ditko writes on it up until uh, Strange Tales, uh, oh. uh, one, hold on. He writes on it until Strange Tales, one. Oh, thank you. You just did oh. that. That's awesome. There we go. You can see his little mouth in the corner, and, and in some versions you can see Strange himself very clearly on the right side of the album. Uh, I guess they, like, I don't, I don't know if they told yeah, Marvel they were is. doing I it. I doubt they did. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's Doctor Strange right there. Amazing. Uh, so Dicko, <laughs> Dicko does it until oh, Strange man. Tales 146. Then Bill Everett takes over for him. Bill, Bill the Human Torch Everett. Bill Human Torch 
Submariner. Namor the Submariner, Marvel number one from 1939, I think that is, right? Mm -hmm. That Bill Everett takes over for Ditko. So legend mm. followed by legend and then Maurice Everett. <laughs> and the, they replaced Everett because he was notoriously slow on all of his deadlines. And mm. they're like, listen, we want to keep you employed. You're great. Um, you're you're the slowest artist I've ever met. We can't we can't work with you. You're you're crashing our deadlines. Marie, get in here. You can meet this guy's deadlines. Do the work instead. And this and then happened she, in. And then this is what she did. She does Pink Floyd albums. Well, <laughs> how how did how did they finally give her this gig? Well, because there was no, a thing. Th it's a great sort of one of those weird accidental stories. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. we we can take her career kind of in order or not, but like she'd arrived back at back in comics. She was out of comics from the late 50s to the early 60s because the comics code wrecked everything, more or less. Mm -hmm. there, there's a more detailed version of that. Um, but she went to work for a bank, and she did a comic there that explained how checks work. Um, and then she worked for, like, a film company, and she, so she was doing storytelling stuff. But she landed back in comics in 65 at Marvel. The Marvel Revolution was sort of four years in. Uh, and once again, her brother was working over there, and they were like, well, she can do everything. So she came in and she was coloring and she was doing production department stuff and she was doing all this stuff. Uh, and then a year or two later, uh, as Marvel was getting big pop culture impact, a I can't remember now which magazine, uh, but a magazine wanted to do uh, a feature oh. on Marvel. It was like, was it Esquire? Maybe. I was just looking at this. Yeah, it's in here. But they, they wanted to do a feature on Marvel and they wanted to accompany it with some extra art that would talk about sort of like the the hip college kids of the 60s and the mm -hmm. revolution they were mm -hmm. having it wasn't explicitly marvel stuff but it was like supposed to be in a marvel style and they were like well, they, can you give us your artist your kirby guy they wanted they wanted kirby and they were like uh we need kirby he's on deadline <laughs> yeah. we can't do that um and so i don't believe it is officially recorded whose idea it was but they were like marie's fast she doodles all the time because this was the even though she was doing other stuff like marie drew all the time. She drew little yeah. cartoons of everyone around her constantly. Um, the one thing you find every on every page of this book is people going, I wish we had saved all the little cartoons that she did. Mm -hmm. um, her friends did, thank God. There's some wonderful ones in here. Um, but So somebody said, Marie from production can, can do your, your fill-in art for this thing of like the college heroes. Um, it's these little profiles on like protesting students. They're adorable. Um, here. Not all your supermen are in the funnies. Meet Super Student. It's the 1966 September issue of Esquire magazine. Um, and it varies who kind of gets credit for this, but it's often said that uh, Martin Goodman mm. saw the resulting magazine article and went like, that's from the lady who's the production department? She can draw. And was like, Why are we not like, using yeah, her? We yeah. have someone just Seems sitting like a terrible around waste who can of talent. turn in, like... Your Jack Kirby was too busy. Here is your superhero art. Um, so it, Jack Kirby's too busy. Here's Kirby. And and, yeah. she, and and she also she's so much. She's such a chameleon. She can she can fake so many people so well. Oh and yeah. there's uh, oh man. There's this is 1978. She would end up doing a cover for uh, what? And I really want to know more about this event because I didn't know it was a thing. But in 1978, apparently there was a comic convention that was themed around women in comics. Yes. Yes. Um, and that's. Loaded in somewhere. Oh, you've already got it. I Convention program, 1978, you. women in comics. It's a bunch of heads. Uh, just gonna bunch go of heads. for time. There we go. Yep. That is Marie doing every style. Wow. In, in, including her creation at the bottom right corner. Mm-hmm. Which we'll get to later, I suppose. I'm uh, jumping a gun. Jumping a gun. You've got a, a flawless Frank Thorne Red Sonia. You've got a Disney. You've got comic strip art. You've got a Dave Cockrum Storm there. What looks like you've God, got a flawless Ramita Mary Jane over on the left. Oh. Is that uh, is character. that Captain Marvel? Like, because. It's going to be, that's, yep. That is Captain Marvel. Mi that's going to be Carol Marvel. Danvers. That's, Mar that's Carol Danvers. Uh, um, she had, she, yeah, because she had briefly worked, uh, she had done some work for the Ms. Marvel Is book. that Red Sonia? That yeah, is Red Sonia on the bottom left. Black Widow. Uh, um, there's Zatara. She's doing Golden Age Little Lulu. Styles. She's doing Little Orphan Annie. She's doing that Kirby Sue Storm. Oh, wow. There. You know what she else? Oh, well, uh, with the exception of Medusa and Sue Storm up there, it's almost like Golden Age is mostly up on the top. I think it goes then more, it gets more down modern. kind of into silver because, and modern at the bottom. Because Spider-Woman was brand new in 78. Spider-Woman, yeah. I think 78 mm -hmm. was the year of Spider-Woman, yeah. I believe. 
Uh, either there or very close to there. Um, Ms. Marvel was 78. Marie Severn was like, do 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 do. You need all of that? Sure. Um, I can do all of that on one program this is illustration. Easy. Uh, Here, so. This is one of my favorite pictures from her run where she's fighting one of the weirder Doctor Strange villains named Zom. Oh my this, god! Like, oh, nice. Can I finish this frame? I'm gonna bring yeah. it specifically. He's, uh, Doctor Strange is, is, has been turned cubist. <laughs> uh, and like, you can see in the, in, the, in the whole page, this is just one panel where everything else is relatively normal. Uh, I mean, well, Doctor like, Strange. And, well, yeah, for Doctor Strange. And right above that picture, uh, the Ancient One has been um, encased in, turned into stone at Stonehenge. Like, Zom melded the Ancient One into the, like, one of the pillars of Stonehenge. One of the, the monoliths. This is also interesting because you can see the sort of, the very effective but very pragmatic color sense uh, that yes. she was. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if there's official credits for this. I would expect that she probably colored this herself. Probably so. She was there's not, yeah, most there weren't credits things. for it. Um, but you can see like the, the at, at some point. I also point, love like Umar uh, Dormammu's <laughs> sister disappears, but it looks like a dot matrix printer. Like it's just like, she was bringing in techniques that she probably learned from you know, like, or maybe she already knew them, but like, you know, the stuff that we saw Wallace Wood doing, we see her doing here. Like, that's a completely different every, kind of paper. Every conversation know? I've been I've been able to read about uh, about her has been that she was extremely observant and and was always watching yeah. what everybody was doing and just kind of absorbing and absorbing them. Mm. So yeah, like on this page alone, she's got like this weird like, all right, I'm gonna paste this into the frame. Oh, and uh, here's like some weird art. You know, it's just, like cubist artwork. It's yeah, so. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah. Her job at Marvel, especially in those early years, was to kind of do a little bit of everything. To uh, if something needed to be changed when art came in and they didn't have time to send it back out again, uh, and they just needed someone who was already in the office to change it, that was something she was there. Those were called paste ups, uh, or or doing my corrections um, or other things like that. Uh, she was supervising most of the color most of the time. There were a lot of very talented colors who ended up working at Marvel, but at a certain point, uh, they gave her kind of the honorary-ish title of head colorist, um, and she was supervising a lot of it. There was a part of the job that involved sort of giving ideas and direction for covers or sending mm -hmm. out sample ideas for covers, and that tended to also be uncredited work, but they've discovered more and more that like, oh, that was a Marie Severin cover with this person doing the pencils over it but she kind of roughed out the idea, or she inked it over somebody else's idea. Um, that is a job that eventually, uh, John Romita Sr., uh, the, the famous uh, Spider-Man artist, came in around the time she did and sort of like was mentored by her and then ended up, like he did at this, the official art director job for a long time, like helping keep everybody sort of coordinated and give, doing roughs for covers and things like that. And when he moved to special projects, she took over officially that part of the job and enhanced those level of duties. That was what uh, I was re referencing earlier, where it just made me really love him to read about like, him being like, and uh, there was a new editor at that time and they weren't getting along and he was sort of being petty and he didn't give her the title and uh, you know, just called her head artist instead. Mm -hmm. um, but it is interesting because very rarely are you reading sort of accounts of the history of comics, and it's like no one's like. And then head artist Marie Severin of yeah. Marvel Comics. Uh, so there. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to, I get excited, so I focus on the things that didn't go well. But the truth is that she like was. <laughs> happily doing a ton of productive work that made Marvel mm -hmm. Comics what it was mm -hmm. for many, 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 many years. Do we want to go backwards to EC or forward to other things she did at Marvel? I, no, mean, I mean, we've, we've covered I go, Marvel. I can go anywhere. I've got a giant pile of things that I eventually want to show she, off just because she... She colored one of my favorite EC stories, which was the Wallace Wood, uh, My World. Oh! Like she did the colors. Uh, my, Do we have uh, any samples for that? Um, I don't have anything there that on I my looked, computer. I was okay, say. I we do to, have yeah. some. Let's let's go back and talk about how it worked at EC. Huh? Yeah, yes. Because we went over this a bit last week, but people might have missed oh, last week, or they might up. be watching this in the archives. Um, so there was a company called EC. Uh, they are one of the most famous comic book companies of all time. Because what, is, what does the EC stand for? Which is originally is, educational, educational comics, comics. <laughs> eventually entertaining <laughs> comics. Here we go. Actually, I do have. Have it here. Oh, nice. there we are. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh. Oh, man. I love her comments on 
coloring him in particular because uh, she frankly admits that it was quite the challenge. Uh -huh. Lots of little fiddly bits and lots of uh, work done on, on the colorist part to figure out what should go in the foreground and what should fade into the background. Um, but you can see how the way she's in a very busy panel, she's using color differences to bring stuff forward and back mm -hmm. to lead the eye around and make everything more clear. Um, and she, of course, loved all the fiddly detail, but also complained about it in a well, wonderful it's a lot of work. It's a yeah. Lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work, you, and it's got to be, and it's gotta be done in, in the work. <laughs> got so, 10 days left. Easy Comics, uh, there were, in the 40s, there were a million, like, comics were new. Everybody was trying them. Tons of houses sprang up, all doing different kinds of work. Some people got reputation for doing tons and tons of work on the cheap. And one company ended up getting a reputation for having some of the very finest artists doing some of the best work uh, at apparently pretty good prices. Um, they, just like everybody else, they were working with crappy paper and very simple printing processes and widely varying ideas about how sophisticated their readership were. But they have tended to stand out from a lot of the comics of their time as, as they've been reprinted over and over again. And uh, the more people look back at them, the more impressed they get by the, the pool of talent that coalesced around this company, EC. Uh, so in the late 40s and early 50s especially, they were specializing in a few different genres that they tended to be innovators in. Um, they were doing a lot of crime. They sort of invented horror comics. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done several episodes on EC, so you're probably familiar with a lot of this, but just in case. Uh, they were pushing boundaries on science fiction, uh, uh, horror, on crime, uh, on westerns and war stories. They had a, a, a range of books that they were doing. And some of these extremely talented artists were sort of dissatisfied with some of the constraints of their conditions. And in some cases, there was nothing they could do about it. But in one case, there was something they could do, which was that Harvey Kurtzman, uh, the incredibly talented writer and artist of a lot of the war stuff, uh, was really tired of sending his stories away to the factory where somebody guessed what color things should be <laughs> and having them come back with all the uniforms the wrong color. Because he was... Uh, scrupulously detailed about his mm -hmm, research, mm -hmm. uh, and well, and he was like, he also demanded that of all the other artists working on his stories and yeah. stuff like that. He's like, no, 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 no. I want you to research exactly how many eyes the fly has. That's what it should have. Like, <laughs> that's the correct number of eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so he worked with a different artist, uh, a guy named John Severin, and uh, oh, when complaining, heard that name before. yeah. When complaining about these terrible colors they were getting back, because at the time you would mail it off to essentially the printing company where somebody would, uh, because coloring was a chemical process, you needed to sort of etch it into different plates uh, and it would all be done sort of on site there and they were separators with these people who made the colors. Um, but uh, they were tired of the very indifferent results they were getting. He complained to John. John said, I have a sister, she's autistic. <laughs> which was the level of recommendation that got you in the door uh, for, in, and this is generally agreed upon to probably be in 1951, mm. around when it, she got there, um, until essentially the company folded in, in 55 or transformed substantially in the wake of the Comics Code. Uh, Marie Severin came in-house and became the colorist of EC Comics. So I think, I think by the end of the company there were only, there were two. Was there another one? feel like there was. I, okay. I, I remember seeing credits for a second one on a couple of the stories. Um, I didn't look into it. I didn't do much research, but I saw... Could it have been some of the people who worked on the uh, recolors that were in... Uh, Entirely possible? Okay. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, I, only, I only know I saw them in the credits. Yeah, fair enough. So. Because a lot of the digital colors are people doing their best attempt to gotcha. restore it. So it's, yeah. uh, it can is sometimes credited to two people gotcha. um, because it's that person kind of doing marine. Yeah. Because none of this stuff got saved. So um, I, I have a leading question for you to, in an attempt to, to give me an excuse to lift my iPad. Uh, my leading question for you is, how did coloring work back then? Gosh golly, I just don't understand. Oh, it's so exciting. And today I get to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is all I wanted today. And I get to now pay off uh, the thing that I said last week, which was uh, the, that I learned reading this book, the mystery of why everyone has blue eyes. Yeah. I, I am eager to learn at your feet. <laughs> I, 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 I know this now, but I'm excited to hear it again. So comics, uh, you've <laughs> heard a lot of references to four color fear or, or other things that refer to like four color comics. Mm. Uh, 
And that is because they were literally made with four colors. There was black, and then there was red, green, uh, sorry, red, yellow, and blue in different uh, degrees. So you had a 25% red, a 50% red. Uh, you, they may have had the 75, or it may have just been 100. Well, this orange here is, 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 is YR2, so it's yellow, red, two. So that's half red and full half, yellow to yeah. make an orange. Uh, <laughs> and there's blue, two, which is, which is I think, 50% blue. Mm -hmm. Blue, two. Full blue, I think, and like anything that, yeah, like, and like, uh, this is yellow blue for the green. Uh, and straight what yellow you're for looking that. at there is. I, okay, I'm trying to remember what Twitter feed I stole this from. I feel a little. A I little, think this was Dave uh, Scheidt. I, I believe uh, it was Dave Scheidt. Thank that you. I found a bunch of these wonderful references uh, as up, well. Look at this brilliant thing. You can find it on Twitter, and I and I, I highly recommend you do. So I'm, I'm going to. Uh, this is called a color guide. So what they would do is they would send the art off to be essentially photographed, and they would come back with what they called a silver print, which was sort of a a because copy machines didn't exist. The techniques for doing things why. were very complicated. There uh, we are. I, I guess I loaded that. Wow, one bless well. you. Uh, they would the the printing people would send down uh, for the use of their colorist. Uh, a sort of loosely printed black and white version, and Marie Severin, as the system they eventually worked out, would literally watercolor them. Um, but she would try to do it in a way that made it easy for the color separators to interpret what she wanted uh, in, in terms of the color and the contrast. So B2 on the forehead there, as you can see, means what, half strength blue. Uh, you can see full blue on the nightgown. Uh, Probably the blue in the hair there is going to be like blue three for the palest or something like that. But the orange there, you can see yellow and red too. Uh, the jacket is made out of what is that? B3. Blue three. Blue. Three. Or it looks uh, like B three. B three. But like the yeah, it looks like there's there's R two B three. Thank you. R two and B three is how you get that specific jacket, which she would have to figure out and learn. Uh, and in addition. Oh. She was always trying to sort of rig the color choices to work best with the uneven results of this process. So knowing that they were printing on cheap paper mm -hmm. and that you might not get what you wanted back exactly, you would make choices that would likely work even if the color landed slightly in the wrong place. So for instance, I like this one a lot. Mm -hmm. um, this is the food for thought page, which I think is also loaded. Uh, R2B3 is not the droid you're looking for. <laughs> Well done, Chief. Hi, Chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's another example page, and you can see the way this one is designed to play to the strengths and weaknesses. Um, she's picked a lot of great contrast. Um, you've got full yellow for the bubble again. Uh, she's making those little heads in the background stand out by choosing wildly contrasting colors, so they'll come through clearly. But this front panel is entirely blue. It's moody, it sets it apart from the rest of the page, and it does not depend on that color landing exactly in the right tiny fiddly bits that they might want. Mm -hmm. um, what is that, a Jack Davis? Is that a, yeah, Jack Davis yeah. art. This is one of the only companies where people signed their art, which is amazing. It was Look, the first company that, to really that, do that, that, to that, allow that. That table also, some, one of the things I was talking about is some of the colors had a, had a, had a uh, reputation for bleeding more than others. Mm. So knowing what colors you could do fine detail with would, would definitely would, would have an effect on the, on the, on the art of what and, we and what would be okay to bleed over and what would become a problem. So in terms of okay to bleed over and versus a problem, that is where we get the offhanded reference she made to why everybody's eyes were blue back in the day is that if you gave somebody brown eyes, you'd have to say, we need half red, half yellow, a, a, a little bit of blue. However you get the color brown, yeah. you need it to be in the three same pressing. place on three different chemical plates for to get a blue eye. Yikes. Because if one of them is off, you've got like red bleeding out into the whites of your eyes and yellow over here. Whereas if you give them blue eyes, it's even just, if they miss, it's just blue eyes slightly to the right. It's just a blue eye. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, less, the of only a, it's less of a junk. simple to color eye, eye color. color from that period of time. Oh. So I now question whether Batman even was ever supposed to have blue eyes, or whether it was just a weird artifact of the like, look, brown eyes are complicated. Green eyes are complicated. I mean, like, I, blue I, eyes I could are see cute. a lot of ways that that would have just become a serious problem. Like, yeah. as a genuinely, give him red eyes then. You can red eyes, yellow eyes, or blue eyes, but everything else is kind of a mess. <laughs> yeah. Ready to like fall apart. And it's one of the things that she talks about in terms of coloring for the different artists, where like, the more fiddly bits you put on a costume, 
the more danger there is of like that small distinction being lost and you mm -hmm. just ending up with weird blobby color. Whereas if she makes the whole thing red and it comes out red, it's great. And she also makes a lot of gentle fun of the different artists where she'd be like, and this one would have three belts in this shot and one belt in that one. So if you don't bother coloring it, it won't stand out as weird and inconsistent. <laughs> but you have to always decide which details you're gonna go ahead and emphasize and make sure they're actually in wow. the third page. Um, she did a lot of sort of gentle ribbing of the artists that she worked with, even though she was praising them to the heavens because they were all geniuses. They're all geniuses. Um, but and, like and even Wally Wood, she would say a lot of like, and there'd be this many buckles here and that many there, and you just kind of use your best judgment. And I think that's where we alluded last time to this question of whether or not she acted as a censor for EC. Now this is an interesting one because it gets yeah. repeated in a lot of interviews, usually affectionately, yeah. where they say, because she was literally a, a Catholic schoolgirl before yeah. she grew up and got a job and then mm. came to work at a very young age at the company that would get famous for publishing the grossest, most out there woman's severed head bleeding It's in good pictures. taste. It's in good it, taste. For a horror comic, it is. <laughs> Call back to the Senate <laughs> subcommittee. Uh, so there that was- is deep. The, her, one of her, the, the, one of the guys, Al Feldstein, along with publisher Bill Gaines, were sort of the, the writing heart of EC Comics, was churning out the, the lion's share of the stories mm. um, that people were then turning back in. Um, and he's one who, in his interview, he thinks of it as like, she kind of toned us down when we went a little <laughs> too far. Now, what she says is essentially, if you draw somebody's disemboweled guts and she tries to put all of the appropriate colors in there, it's one of those classic examples of squiggly bits mm -hmm. where if it comes back wrong, it's gonna look really messy. But if she makes it all yellow, you're like, okay, some, I can see those guts very clearly. Uh, or in some cases, if she makes it all blue, they would sometimes see those results and be like, okay, she's toning us down a little. And she yeah. would sometimes, she firmly denied that she was ever trying to to make her artistic judgment substitute for the people doing that, where she's like, no, I could do her as well as the best of them. That was what we were doing. People were tuning into these books to see the disemboweling. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get in the way I'm not taking that away, away but that. the color process. But she does also occasionally say, make a reference in different mm -hmm. interviews to sort of being like, well, you know, if you happen to, to do that, like I didn't want this to, them to drag us in front of Estes Kefauver and break our hands. Yeah. Which so there was, she was kind of a, it's a little bit of both. I'm pretty sure she was just doing the best job she could, coloring these stories to their best advantage. But there's probably some basis for the joking reputation that she got. I mm -hmm. just think like she would, she would. I like that she would be horrified by the suggestion that she was trying to get in the way of any of this art because mm -hmm. she considered herself. And very early in this process, she gives some beautiful interviews about the role that color takes in telling a story. Mm. And the artist she worked with came to appreciate that like it, you know, she actually cared whether this scene was moody and therefore called for different colors. This scene was sunlit and therefore called for different colors. They asked her in here if she would color the pages as they came in or like wait for the whole story. And she basically says like, I don't understand the question. Of course you read the whole story. <laughs> like it's not phrased that way, yeah. but essentially she's just like, obviously you have to read the whole story or you can you can really color it and this is an era where it would not have been that weird to say everything's moving so fast color it as it comes mm -hmm. because we need to hurry yeah but she but she understood EC the, was the kind of place of... where they would say if you said i need the whole eight pages before i can do the story oh man. that's how it's going to work okay i am excited oh and by the way we will be taking our topic our five minute topic at the end of the episode so please please feel free to uh comment uh in the chat hi chat uh, if I'm uh, watching any kind you, of Jack. comment, he's watching. Behave. I also I found I, f I found a, a piece of coloring. I found like some some of that Beautiful. messiness uh, that like interesting places where like the the color is bleeding off in in like odd ways. And if it landed in literally the wrong place, it was called way. off register. Uh, um, there's also some really interesting off register stuff happening in the dress, where you can see like I, you can't quite see it on the monitor, but there's some color shift happening in an attempt to get this very specific blue. No. That kind of and comes in, like and you get like, like an orange in it. Also. Yeah, I mean, like, and you can see the places where things are kind of, are like, where, where things are just a little messy. I mean, like, it's it's is nice. Is this a Marie, just, or is this just a I don't a know. This was just me of old comics, yeah. going into my But if it is an old EC comic, it is uh, very probably. No, this is DC. Oh, this is DC. Because oh. there's, there's Kane's up there. Gotcha. Mm. So this is a House of Mysteries. 
I don't remember which one is which. I don't know either. House of Whispers is out today. <gasps> I'm excited. I got it. I've started reading this week's books. I've, I've started this week's books. So, mm. after several years at EC, during which we have, uh, she's, she's coloring basically the full-time in-house colorist for these uh, incredible books. Uh, and they come more and more to trust her judgment, where mm. she sort of says, like, they looked closely at her, like, for about a, a second, and then they were like, all right, she's got this. Yeah, um, she's good. Have, they, she's got it. They were yeah. doing so much work so much quickly. Uh, so, so much quickly. So much quickly, they go. So uh, much quickly. Now, that, unfortunately, the beautiful dream of EC Comics could not last forever. They got in trouble for corrupting the youth. Please see our earlier episodes about the Comics Code. We've, we've done two. <sighs> Uh, before part one, part two. that time ended, we got some really beautiful early art, and this, it okay, it does make me a little crazy, because in all the interviews about her, only a couple people ever asked this question, but she was literally around at the company that created Mad Magazine, mm -hmm. uh, and even did some coloring work for Mad Magazine before it switched to being a black and white magazine. And for Panic, also. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, later in life became known, as much as we've admired her penciling work for standard superhero comics, virtually agreed on by everyone is that the place where she shone uh, beyond compare was in humor. Mm -hmm. um, but she oh, was yeah. never hired to draw anything for Mad, despite the fact that we have these beautiful cartoons she did of the entire EC office. Uh, and I think I forgot to load up... I've got one here. This is a later one, but she has some that were even contemporary to the time. Yeah, I, ha I found one of them. I mean, like, it's... Some of the best documents you'll get. I love this, Al Williamson. It's late, but it's beautiful. <laughs> With uh. a baseball bat, for reasons that I'm a little worried to even ask. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's kind of threatening. Uh, oh, sever she drew herself down at the bottom there. Yep, mm -hmm. she's in there. She's uh, she's down at the bottom with a, with a cocktail. And I, I've brought it up she on shows. She probably needed it with all those guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I brought it up on oh. shows before, but she did, even at the time, she did a mailing uh, for the new trend to EC Comics where she drew the entire bullpen and drew herself in it. I think I brought it up last week, but I think I forgot to load in the image this week. Let's see. If uh, this is the only group shot that I grabbed. Was There's a the, black uh, and white group shot. Early 50s EC. I have it on my wall uh, because it's my favorite thing. But I don't know if I loaded it up, so give me one sec. Well, and this is this is a this was this was a relatively recent piece too, apparently. So. Well, look, Kurtz is next to all his research. Oh, materials. I know. Look at that. Oh, guns, and guns and fun, war and mayhem, laughs. This uh, was oh, the. she drew Kurtzman. It's with a yeah. man figure. Kurtz he would man. sign his name that way. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I never Kurtzman. That. You, you oh, see a little. Oh, uh, there's a book. Of, there's, a, there's a book of hoo-ha and a, a book of giggle. <laughs> uh, book of peace and go, go fly, fly a kite. kite. <laughs> yeah. Panic number one, she did this uh, caricature of the EC gang. Merry Christmas to oh. all as well. A good night. Al Williamson. Uh, this is my copy of the book, so I can mess it up if I want. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know, it's, it's making me twitch. Um, but uh, here's the entire EC game, in in including the various... Do you remember reading that, like, uh, Gaines was on, like, weird weight loss pills and things that uh -huh. made him loopy? They're in this image. No, they're not. He's got his serious? reducing pills and his when business gets bad pills oh, and his sleeping oh pills. My god. Oh, no. And a oh gun my god. that is labeled when it gets real bad. Oh, oh no. That is dark. That's oh. too much. So I can't imagine why they got tr in trouble with early 1950s America. Oh. Uh, also, this one I, uh, that, uh, Oh, yeah, that we pulled up last yeah, week. Yeah, I pulled this up last week. But that's one that yeah. she did for one of their Christmas parties as well. Mm -hmm. This is the one beautiful. where he's got the. Here we go. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So she uh, she was a, she was a good artist. Is that a Rembrandt down there? What is he holding? Oh, yeah. So she. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, here's her just doing a random like Happy Holidays, which I. It's it's bad. Oh God! Like, she's very. She remembers her or remembered her EC days very very fondly. But look it baffles me. The more I look at it, the more I was like, you just had her there, and she was this good, and all she did was color. I mean, I don't mean all she did because coloring is an amazing and noble calling, and she did a great job at it. But it is baffling. It's I, baffling. I can't get over it. Uh, For her to have that much talent and to be only being doing that one thing. Um. So let's see. Wait. I have this ridiculous thing, which still blows my mind. Like I'm not even. I, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is another one of those things that I found on on Twitter uh, today during Jesus. Doing <laughs> and again, like this is 
just for the love of God. So much later, when she lands at Marvel and they figure out that she can draw and start putting oh. her on different books, there's one run that does become sort of one of the closest ones to like a signature run, and it is on uh, with her brother inking over her mm. as a art team. Um, this is a portfolio associated with it. They did a Robert E. Howard character named Cole. Cole the oh. Conqueror. Cole the Conqueror. Conqueror. They did for about, I think, 14 issues, something like yeah. that. Uh, and it, it's, it, it's, it was a, a consistent run that they really got to put their stamp on. Um, and there's just some absolutely beautiful stuff. I think I loaded up some coal. There we go. There we go. Look at wow. that. That's some, I mean, like, you can really see the, the EC influence. With a more modern, uh, with a more modern uh, color, color. Uh, so this well, is the, yeah, this is the uh, 70s look at that, by look this point. That after great. the comics code has been relaxed too. God, that the the villain in that in that piece is so beautiful. Uh, so okay, I give up on finding that other DC <laughs> EC uh, bullpen picture, but I love it because she draws herself in with a little. Uh, and they wondered if this was a, a reference, but like she draws herself with a little whitewash pail um, be, and, and has, I think the Ed, Al Feldstein is maybe telling her like, now I want a good clean job. And I think it's just a reference to like her being the like, and I'll paint it up now. Yeah. But it's this beautiful full office shot of like the women answering the phones and every artist with their trademark and signature style uh, because she just, that was the thing that she couldn't turn off. She drew everybody around her all the time. She drew little cartoons. She drew things. She famously, in the Marvel offices, uh, and I assume you guys oh, ran out We're going to get into too. this. Oh, we are going so. to get into this. Amazing. Okay. Well, we can, we can share that Well, one. I was like, I'm uh, waiting for us to get there organically. I mean, you know, uh, I'm just, you know, you're, 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 you've got such a good flow. I'm sorry. It's Your flow is amazing. Is this is what I'm here for. <laughs> So Flo Steinberg was <laughs> the only other woman at Marvel, and they became friends. Uh, uh, so when she did land at Marvel, there are some wonderful examples of her cataloging the, like, because she would do this, she would draw little birthday cards for her friends, she would draw mm. things on the backs of envelopes when she wrote on, uh, letters to people, she would draw caricatures of everybody in the office. One thing I love about this book is that every time they interview someone, they sort of seem to feel that they were the chief person that she got. Like Herb Trimpey thinks that he got the worst of it, and Ramita's like, she got everything I ever did. It was like, there was nothing dumb that you could say that there wouldn't be a cartoon of you the next day. But they all loved her. Yeah. Uh, or at least everybody willing to talk to them loved her, but they seemed to have talked to everybody she ever worked with, so it's pretty consistent. Oh, if people didn't like you, people they're, they're far more, far more <laughs> likely to have, have something to say about it. You're, you're reminding me of anything. the story of um, Devo, when they first came mm. out with their, you know, whip it and that whole sound and everything, they were like, haha, we have the most unique sound ever. No one can ever copy this. And then Weird Al's like, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> uh, and, and he creates, like, uh, Dare to be Stupid, and it sounds exactly like a Devo song. And Devo was like, uh, oh, oh, other people can do what I, okay. <laughs> okay, so we were wrong. Uh, and Weird Al's just like, hey, what's up, guys? All right, cool. I'm going to go be Michael Jackson now. Peace. <laughs> like, it sounds like it's it's weird to compare her to Weird Al Yankee. Weird Al. A little weird, but I get where you're coming from. But, like, <laughs> the fact that she's, like, so multifaceted in her capacity to match other people's artistic voices in the same way that Weird Al can. Mm. And then also to be able to put humorous spins on it and to, like, just screw around with people and prank them and everything. It's just like, yeah. she's kind of like the Weird Al chameleon of comics. Is she the Weird Al of comics? Bit. She's is, the Weird is she Al, the Al, Al, Al Alfred Matthew Yankovic of comics. She is. And yes. she was also secretly like writing half of the scores of things and you just didn't realize yeah. it. Which maybe he is, I don't know. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. I, uh, I, I, we, can, we can do this image if you want, because this image, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. very... Yeah, yeah, show this one. I, so, I saw Lynn on that, and now I'm interested. So there's three <laughs> names here. It's Chris, uh, Len, okay, and uh -huh. Dave. Okay. So this is... Oh, there, God, I didn't even have to do it. Look at that. Yeah, I found you this one. You were already ready. This is apparently <laughs> yeah. what the... Uh, it was published, I believe, in one of the fan magazines, uh, as opposed to one of the internal Boom. cartoons. Like Probably Boom, Boom. maybe. But like, I, I, it might have been internal. Uh, the I, I way think this it one started internal was the, get, was the vibe I got. That makes sense. It was described as, this is what the fans wanted to do to the new team before they had had a chance to read them. This was, uh, pre they were pretty sure these guys were going to destroy the X-Men, because it is 1975 and that is Len Wein, Chris Claremont, Mont and Dave, Dave Cockrum. Yeah. 
and they're about to and so this is this is this so, is the fan reaction. So there was fan reaction to wait, what are you doing to the X Men? Yeah. And then well, they were like point, giant size X Men number one. For yeah. Years it had had can't, and how were they even mad about it? Yeah, that's what I, that's Fans why I'm crazy. asking. That's why I'm asking. So, like, why are they mad? Like, because you haven't had an original X Men comic in eight years, and we liked it that way. But they're definitely and we liked it, it that way. <laughs> So, uh, we didn't get new X-Men and we liked it. <laughs> Don't give me new X-Men. <laughs> and yeah, apparently that, that turned out okay though. <laughs> she also uh, oh, that's famously funny. I left never heard that. Oh, man. A, a I'm learning so much. Oh God. She so documented cool. so much. Like, and a bunch of people in here say, <laughs> like, I wish they would put out a book of those cartoons. So I'm I don't know if this is reasonable, but I like in the wake of everybody kind of rediscovering her work right now and sharing their mm. appreciations. I hope that someone is out there trying to see how many they can gather of these old. Oh, what a, what a wonderful collection! Because she would later be. did. Uh, did I load Foom 16? Uh, oh man, we're going to Foom. All right. Because speaking of caricatures of all of the bullpens, I've got some X stuff at some point, but I've also got I've, and also that amazing how uh, how to be a, car, a comic. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, oh. the Foom. Oh my God, this was so amazing. Oh my this God. Is one of my because before I knew who this was, we got this magazine in at the shop and I stared at it and pored over it forever. And just like I did with the Issei bullpen picture I forgot to load in, got completely shocked because I was like, who is Marie Severin? Mm -hmm. This thing is amazing. It came with a detailed key. It is the entire Marvel office, circa early 70s, whenever, uh, oh, 1973 okay. Marvel bullpen. Uh, it is the entire Marvel office, which by that time is significantly more than like the five people. She has drawn herself down by the number 16, painting it on the cover with a little ink pot. Uh, I assume that's her because she's coloring it in. Let me just make sure. Oh, my God. That key is tiny. Yep. That's her number 79 in the key, uh, painting with a little red pot of paint, Marie Severin. Uh, oh, my God. So we could honestly, you could pick a figure and we can look up who it is because it's so much fun. That's so amazing. Oh, oh, um, oh my God! I don't even know where to begin. There's so much happening. <laughs> um, who, is there someone doing a magic trick over here? I think. Okay, I let's know. look for the person <clears throat> on the far left, standing next to the guy in the beret in the bottom left room. Someone is flipping something into the air. Thirty-one. Um, thirty-one. <clears throat> There's my voice. Um, they are listed alphabetically, so excuse me as I skim this for oh, the number 31. This is not easy, but it is fascinating. Um, four people are labeled mysterious person. That's interesting. Um, huh. Mysterious person. I wonder if it's that she didn't... Oh my gosh! 31, flipping the coin in the air, is another of the most famous colorists of all time. That is Glynis Wayne. Len really? Wayne's wife at Look the at time. that. Uh, who is one of the the most heavily credited cover and colorists in Marvel history, and uh, was also featured in the uh, when we did the crossover episode mm -hmm. with um, Dan Casey. Mm -hmm. She was in that three comic crossover <laughs> with Lynn Ween and uh, the others. Oh my God! There's just so much happening. And uh, as far as people said at the time, this was a, a, essentially a dead on everyone in the office from the top. Uh, as as drawn. Who's the by skeleton? <laughs> is there a key for the skeleton? Let's Please see. let there be a key for the skeleton. There is a key for the skeleton. Yes. Uh, there is a dead. There is a skeleton in what the office. The heck? The skeletons in the closet of 1963 and 73 Marvel. You know who that is? No. Person without appointment. Wow. That is what is labeled in this key. Wait. The skeleton. What? Uh, we didn't describe what oh, the skeleton is. Uh, keep going, right there, right there. Right there. Oh, yeah, to the left, left, there. There we go. That one is keyed in it as person, person without, without a appointment. appointment. So it's just a person who's waiting? <laughs> and will keep waiting. They have died on stage in their Marvel oh, offices that because is they did so not make an appointment. Funny. And oh. just, okay, in my head, the idea that, like, she was literally <laughs> there when Mad Magazine got invented. And I'm so glad she ended up doing all the Marvel humor stuff, which she did, because I love it very much. Oh, man, there's, a, but there's an image. But does it not make your head want to fall off that you're like, this brain was made for that? For that. She <laughs> should have been doing all of Mad's stuff. I mean, oh. no, no insult to the wonderful artist who worked at Mad Magazine. Uh, 
Come on. Glad, like she eventually, she did, uh, maybe this is a good segue to the, hor the humor stuff, because Marvel yeah. eventually started doing their own humor stuff. So you've heard the, uh, like, comparative brand. advertisements of not brand X. Brand X does this, but not, we're not brand X. We we're, are we're brand X. Not brand X was the signature first humor mag from Marvel. Oh, oh well, these make the me stamps. laugh. The stamps. Oh, yeah. The these trading stamps were amazing. Can we zoom in on the thing there? Because this is my favorite thing, and I kind of want to pass it around the internet. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the the Brotherhood Week that made me laugh look pretty, at the pretty under hard. Oh my God, stomp, stomp a bigot today. today! Oh my God! <laughs> oh bless, bless you, bless you, Gr uh, Grim. Oh. Uh, oh I mean, oh, I'm, I'm, there I don't advocate right. violence, but the thing does. And with uh, with with flowers, but the thing but does. The thing does. <laughs> it's uh, clobber in time for him. It's clobber in time. I've also got to say that there, there's a couple jokes from these books that really like rocked my world. Um, uh, there, I mean, like there was a lot of funny stuff in these books. There's two things I want to show off, which was this thing, which was the from the pulse pounding pinup department. Okay, excellent. Which is in answer mm -hmm. to an avalanche of requests, mostly from Stan and Jack. Uh, <laughs> Breck boldly presents its first true, uh, oh God, that's a word I cannot pronounce. It's to pultritudious pin-up, pin a candid cheesecake photo of one of Marvel's most popular eye-catching lasses, <gasps> demonstrating her own special superpowers for one and all. Here's looking at you, and it's and it's Shrew Storm, not Sue Storm, but here's a pin-up of Sue Storm. <gasps> the that was one. <laughs> uh, That made me oh, really happy. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was That was like, oh, what a... Enjoy, Pilgrim. It says it's fine. <laughs> oh, that is super funny. Um, now that made me that made me really happy. Here's one of my favorites. It's not from one of the official humor magazines, mm. but it's from a Spider-Man annual. Did you all see the one where she illustrated what a story conference looks like? No. No. Uh, this is how we Bring write Spider-Man in three <clears throat> pages. Oh, what did I call this image? Uh, it's in the file, and there's three pages of this story. <laughs> uh, oh boy. It's, <laughs> She's drawn it, and is there a title or another distinctive thing I can tell I can you that will help you to know which three images I, I, this is? I don't know. It's going to say Amazing Spidey Annual, probably. Uh, one, two, and three. It's Yay. one of the... Here we, we go, go applauding. applauding! Yes! Oh, my God. Thank you. Jazzy, good work, Johnny, Chief. Laugh, and Larry, and <laughs> good old so Sally. This is Ramita, Stan Lee, and Stan Lee's brother, Larry, having a story conference of how they make Spider-Man. And it is a three-page, goofy comic. Uh, was this in Brand X? It's, it's, it was in a Spidey annual. Oh, that's what you were saying. And what's interesting is saying. it says no credits because no one will take the blame, but it is, has been identified as a Marie Severin piece. And it is three pages that lay out the increasingly ridiculous way that they come up with a, a, a story for Spider-Man. There's a wonderful, uh, there's a guy named Brian Cronin who does a lot of articles for comic book uh, resources, mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. um, about the history of comics. And this was in a rundown that he had done of sort of contemporary Marvel depictions of how their writing process worked. Because they made a lot of sort of joke comics about mm -hmm. how that worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of them was this Marie Severin story that gives us sort of our best evidence of like, how that worked at the time, which is just mostly Larry getting increasingly desperate and them using that to come up with their storylines. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Larry's trying to get a piece of candy or something, and they're like, oh, okay, uh, an ordinary human, like, he, he, get, he gets heartburn from eating a Sour Patch Kid or something like that. And they're like, oh, perfect. And May gets sick. She gets heartburn from doing something. And he's like, no, that's not, that's not what's going on. He's like, now I've got the, the, now I'm choking on the piece of candy. And they're like, right, okay. Aunt May chokes on the piece of candy. And then this happens. And then that happens. Uh, and they, uh, over the protests of poor hapless Larry here, uh, they, they work out all of the beats of the story. Of course it's terrible. Spidey gets her pills. Two pages. Uh, second page. And one sticks in her throat. He gives her a helpful smack between her shoulder blades. Full page Black action. Page. One page action. Now cut that out. After the last story conference, I was homesick a week. But did we get a story? <laughs> Here's a twist. I'm getting rid of the heartburn. Doesn't get a heart attack. She breaks her back. This is Stan. Uh -huh. Imagine. Imagine. Spidey confined to house. Fourth page. While crime runs wild. What to do? I'd like to get help. Exactly. I'd also like a suit of armor. <laughs> he hires a housekeeper who is really Dr. Doom in disguise. Oh, my God. God. So this is her doing the cartoons of what they're imagining. Yeah. 
Spidey catches housekeeper abusing icebox privileges. Three, Three page, page fight. fight. Why, can't, <laughs> why can't I do my work over the phone? That's it, that's it. Ame picks up the phone to call for help, and the impact fixes her back. Four panel continuity. <laughs> uh, oh, this is so it insane. I quit. Perfect. Spidey won't let Doom quit. Everyone around here is nuts. You're getting in on this or not? No, I'm, I'm enjoying you That's guys. the answer. Doom traps Spidey with an atom bomb. Hitting in the cashew Is that, is that Stan Lee with the goatee? Uh, I believe it is. Oh. Like, oh, the awesome anguish of it all. Oh, yep. my God. Uh, maybe if I play my cards right, I'll get transferred to Millie the model. <laughs> we did it again. Spidey's in a jam he'll never get out of. And, and how's this for a twist? Next-ish karate lessons for Aunt May. Go carry the Marvel banner high. But what'll happen to Spidey? He can carry his own banner. <laughs> but watch out. Here's what happens. Roy Thomas being parodied by his friend Marie as an uber beatnik, like, oh, that's groovy funny. 60s kid. Good morning, Stan. Here's the latest Avengers story. Great plot. The Avengers hire a housekeeper who's really duck doom in disguise, and he causes all kinds of trouble. Eat, eat. We're not moving from this office till we come up with another plot. Oh, hang loose. Sheesh. Oh, my God. Spider-Man in the back. Oh. Oh. oh, my God. And that's the no credits because no one will take the blame, but, like, that's who you've got sitting around in your office is the person who can just churn out that, like, I don't know if she wrote as well as Drew that one. I would imagine that it was a collaborative effort, yeah. probably somewhat, like, depicted my, my in God. Uh, comic. But, yeah, Marie Severin. Oh, uh. Giving us a glimpse behind the scenes of Ramita it's and just, Stan Lee it's, figuring it's, out Spider-Man. It really is like a shame that no one kept all the comics that she drew. Like the 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 history that we've lost because those things are lost. Like we, the glimpse into that mm -hmm. time, into those offices, the politics, the friendships, the inner workings. Like Roy Thomas was like at that time just a kid who was a fan who like happened into this like. He was talented and he had like he had been a part of the community but like he was a kid you know like and he came in and became kind of like the secret weapon of stan lee you know so like that's okay. such a great cartoon for that some people kept their cartoons marie severn drew this of flo steinberg uh flat fabulous flo steinberg deserves an episode of her own and we will have one but uh before <laughs> marie flo, flo was basically the only woman at marvel for a couple years on marvel stationery uh after flo refused to buy more pushpins for the bullpen. Thump pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> what, what, what's underneath it? I can't see it from here. It looks like it's printed on stationery that has all the. So that has all the like the like the, the, the little uh, corner, cool. corner corner. But version. you can see the like that is cool. the the footsteps walking away from the scene of the crime after Tiny Cartoon Marie has, and she oh draws herself god. as the cutest little caricature in all of these. Uh, oh my god. There's also a photograph that I found, uh, someone was sharing it online, uh, of famously, people discussed this, her tribute after Kirby left the company. Uh, she took a pushpin and his last cigar butt and just put it up on the wall. And there's a photo of this in there, I believe. Um, because one person remembered I've, I've it. heard this too. Mm -hmm. One person remembered it as her putting a card on the wall and drawing a little trail of smoke. But in this photograph, you can see even more clearly Oh God! What did I label that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm Jack. so excited. This was a label label episode. Uh, normally, I bring physical things. There we go. I yep. quit. Jack Kirby cigar butt. Wow. This is a. It's there's spoof magazine proof down there. There's July 1970. Someone took a snapshot of this, um, of of her memorializing that... Jack Kirby leaving the offices. Oh of my God. God! Documenting it. Oh my she was god. She just there. She was just there watching it all happen. What happened to that cigar butt? Like, hopefully it got thrown away. away. <laughs> That's really good. Thank you, though. No, like, I am so the opposite. Like, I want someone to have it in like a shadow box and like sell it to the Smithsonian. Like, that is. Please call us if you have Jack Kirby's last cigar butt from Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> please, 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 please call Matt Key if you have Jack Kirby's. I want Jack if Kirby's. It's still attached to a Marie Severin original. All right, that's I fair. Quit. That's fair. Uh, Touche. Um, oh my God! On, on the humor note, I suppose since I, I, I now have something, is I have a cosplay challenge. Uh, on the humor note, uh -oh. I was reading Brand Eck. I read a lot of Brand Eck this week. That so, was kind of my. And after Brand Eck, they did like five different other humor things. And um, every time they did one, Marie Severin was there. So, Brand Eck was yeah, was was a lot of making fun of, and I, I we're going to talk about the Batman and Robin thing, right? Like we have to. 
Sure. Well, I What's mean, the... Brand X, one, one of the most fascinating things about Brand X, I thought, was that they somehow wrote Batman and Robin into Brand X. At one point, J. Jonah Jameson hires Batman and Robin to get rid of Spider-Man. Um, it is not Batman and Robin, and it is not Spider-Man, but it is very obviously Batman and Robin. Batman and, and Rotten? I yeah, think something like that. The, yeah. We'll pull it up in a minute. Which she also said some of her first favorite comics were Batman, so there was probably a particular joy in that. Yeah, and, and she definitely knew how to take the piss out of a lot of these characters. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's, a, there's one character design in particular I am so impressed with, and I just need to read a little bit of this because it is, it is a Marvel cosmic uh, take on Galactus. Um, rise, puny one. Rise and face the monumental majesty, the maliniquic merchandising of Galacticus. Rise because you are in the pulsating presence. Also rise because you are squashing my big toe. Oh. And it is Galactus, the star-to-star -star salesman whose hard sell is legendary. Galacticus, <laughs> he whose foot is ever in the doorway of a zillion galaxies. Galacticus, the no-money-down king of the used comet gang. Rather, a flock of famished forbushes at, at the sales pitch of the... Of, of, oh, yeah, Galacticus! Um... But do not seek to save your pitiful world from the planetary pitchman. Hoopla is my sales territory now. <laughs> I just bought the franchise from the living planetoid. No, Hoopla is still recovering from your last fire sale. Like, you sell real fires. Now, this, oh is, a, this is Galacticus, and it's a Galactus whose costume is entirely made out of random things that door-to-door -door salesmen sell. You can see <laughs> there's there's there's... There's a frying pan and fr and oven mitts for the for the chest. And it's tires, tough lawn. Tough lawn. Oh my god! And like his mask is an oven with hockey pucks and hockey hockey sticks. Oh my god! Uh, I can read you some of the items here, and someone's got to build this costume. Uh, and it's like, oh, let's see this. And he's the, chomping on a cigar because he's oh, Jack Kirby. Because it's Jack Kirby. Intergalactic golf balls, cheap, twenty nine cents. Uh, hockey sticks, going fast, dollar twenty five. Slow moving hockey pucks, ten cents. Um, are his legs on sale? Notions in the rear. Oh dear. His notion, his legs uh, offer services. So right leg is labeled household pests squashed. Carbuncles uh, removed. Yep. <laughs> on on his ankles, he has pre Groundhog Day sale bicycle tires, six forty nine. Uh, One of fit a... any finger gloves, two fifty. Megaphone, three ninety eight. Guaranteed to be heard across school lunchrooms. Stringy twine, seven cents a yard. <laughs> oh my Tough god. Up, uh, where, where's the other one? If uh, if you don't see what you want, ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. Slightly flat snow tires, nine ninety nine. Um, yeah, the notions in the rear. rear. Blow a fuse, electronic range, two ninety nine, ninety nine. One of a kind waist cinch was two dollars, now one ninety nine. It is. Um, I mean, I am amazed. I have never seen somebody at a convention walking around in this. Make it this, happen, yeah, people. Make it this, happen. this, I, 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 I try not to do like call out like, and, and, and it, it doesn't have to be a Wednesday, but I'll be so proud if I see this in the world. If you, if someone's already done this, if you send find a picture, us, please. please send it to us, because this is. So I also she, love this cover that she did for Foom, of uh, Jarvis cleaning all of the oh Avengers laundry. Oh, bring it, bring it. Down here in this corner here. So Foom was uh, after Friends fanzines, of old Marvel. Yeah, fanzines got really big, and then Marvel kind of did their own sort of. So uh, right yeah. I'm gonna find this. And I, you know, I like it. Cloak of Levitation in the background. <laughs> Marie Severin never, never forgot how much she loved Doctor Strange. And she's credited in. I think I, I pulled a couple of images that say like the various ways that she's credited. Partly because it's just fun to look at. But I think I, I pulled a Doc Strange page with her credit on it. Uh, and I put the word credit in the title somewhere. But uh, it was like, because it was always like, because Stan would always write as like, Smiling Stan and Marvelous Marie. Jack King Kirby. Yeah. You know, that, that's where a lot of the nicknames that we know come from. So in the from Doctor Stan. Strange ones, she was uh, Magical Marie Severin. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually they settled on Mirthful Marie. Um, which oh, yeah. Which became the name that sort of this book is under, The Mirthful Mistress. Oh, I just love, look at this Hulk page. Where walks look at the it. immortals. Oh, look at that transformation happening there. Oh, my God, and that's gorgeous. And the color is so good. I just pulled this one because I, I'm, there's something amazing to me just about staring at the, like, the fact of these. The, the fact that she did actually at least get credit for this work, that she was 
putting her stamp on these characters yeah, there were, in the golden age, or not the golden, but the, specifically the silver. There was a lot of stuff that I found that she was credited with, but then I, when I would go to look at the comic, her name's not on it at all. And I would be like, so is this by her? A lot Why of is her name not in this comic at all? Like, I found a couple X-Men that were like that, where like online I was like, nope, she's on it. And I was like, doesn't say anywhere in here that she's involved. Like, what does she do? You know, like, did she color? Did she let her? Like, so. Then there's a lot of that. Tricky. There's a lot of her work that supposedly is credited to the whole bullpen. Um, there's a lot of small spot illustrations. Oh, uh, uh, Rainbow Arch Wizard Matthew. Is that Howard the Duck? Yes. Yes. She did draw yeah. Howard the Duck. She did create, she was, I mean, this credit is one of the, uh, is she credited with a partial creator credit on Howard the Duck? I'm there's not, a character from Howard Dr. the Duck. Dr. Bong. Okay. Dr. <laughs> Late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. I'm gonna show this uh, very random one, but I love it. Um, we showed you last time, Johnny Craig, one of the EC artists, uh, drew famously a very beautiful uh, couple of, of portraits of Marie Severin. Looking oh, yes. like glamorous and, and oh, lovely. Oh yeah, that was towards the back. The, the, le I, I the less comical. The color section, right? Kind, um, kind of int a very intense piece. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so here's, and I should have brought in my giant EC bullpen one so we could like look at it. But like, here's Johnny Craig drawing Marie as as she seemed to him in the the young Marie in the early 50s. And what I love is that many years later she drew this uh, uh, in in tribute to Johnny Craig, the gentleman of comics. Marie Severin arrives early for her sitting, fall 1953. And Johnny Craig, of course, is one of the EC artists who's mm -hmm. also working mm. on creepy stuff all the time. So. Uh, Whoops! If you show up too early, there's a skeleton in your seat. <laughs> and this is how Marie draws herself, um, you know, startled out of her cute little mind. I love uh, she. Was she really he's short? So, he's so dashing. Look at him there. He's, he's he is really, very dashing. But is was she really short? Because she drew herself pretty short. The there. gentleman of comics. I, I'm, I'm curious. Let's see. There's some shots where she's in it with other people. Um, it seems like she draws herself short a lot. It's another painted portrait of her. Oh you. my God! Right. That's a self-portrait. No, 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 that's, that's another Johnny Craig again. Another Johnny. Uh, uh, we'll just show that. Holy cow! Look at. I know it's way down there. Uh, Sorry. It'll, it'll, it'll pop. Thank you for working with like, the chief. Like, wow. Yeah. So here's a caricature she did of him for the Christmas party. Um, uh, oh, she's clearly making fun of him for being slow and meticulous. Oh boy, am I tired? I did a panel today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I did a whole panel. Mm -hmm. And then Ghastly Graham Ingalls here. You know, sometimes those stories make me sick, says Graham Ingalls, but he is holding a sandwich with a human hand in it. Um, oh, up a bit. Up top, sorry. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> and I like this one. Hey, look, a normal, uh, a normal happy guy. Nothing like the rest of us. Nah, just getting talking about mechanics. Um, this was uh, George Evans, uh, who did a bunch of beautiful, like, detailed machine stuff. But I love that even then they had the sense of themselves as like a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I don't know these these cartoons make it feel like she really did feel like part of the family there. You know, well, and, and I love the, looking at them. I like. Oh. The, one of the one of the things that I like. I know I'm a good friend with someone when they can make fun of me. Rib. When they can rib you, mm -hmm. uh, rib, rib. but it, it comes from like there's making fun of, and then there's safely making fun of. There's like, I think you're ugly. Like, well, that's that hurts. But like, if you can find a playful way to say it to me in a way that will make me laugh, because I also like that is such a sign that that person knows you. Yeah. So the fact that Marie could do that with the entire bullpen speaks mm -hmm. volumes, because it's like gentle hey, ribbing, this, gentle ribbing, but I love you. This one's so good. Oh my God. We have to see if we can share this oh, one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Someone has to lean over to read it. Yeah. Oh my God, this is so, oh. It is. Oh, is that, that's Marie. Yeah. Oh, that is funny. It's a picture she did of herself, uh, Marie Severin having a nightmare of all the terrifying witches complaining about the way they are colored in EC. Let's um, see if we can pull that. So let me see if I can, yep. there we go. Uh, so this is little Marie. Uh, Marie Severn has a nightmare. Uh, I think your coloring stinks. I should have been the one in red. Uh, a rich puce or rose matter uh, going into a deep sepia. Did anyone ask us? Oh no, I'm in a silly process blue. A shroud in a lovely mustard tone with a hint of Payne's gray would be perfect. 
Well, don't be too upset, dearie. You'll be staying with us to recolor the whole EC line. Oh, oh my God, oh God. <laughs> Oh my God, that is too funny. Uh, I, I, I mentioned- The more you dig into Marie Severin, the happier she makes you. Oh, man. And, and that's what everybody, like the, the other fun part about this book, which I will plug to the ends of the earth because I'm loving the hell out of it. I took it home years ago and I, I was just gonna say, do, do, you, do you know if you have it at the store? Or is you it? just reordered it. Okay, you it. just yeah. reordered it, thank it's, you. It's here, it's, it's at the store. Oh, okay. I just got it in. Uh, I don't think But it's published by Tomorrow's, they're in, oh, the, the back has a color photo of her, yeah. of her being scared by, by, uh, her early arrival at the appointment. Yeah, this book, uh, which is from Tomorrow's Press, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you are in North Carolina right now, I'm thinking of you. Please be safe. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, th this is a color version of her getting all startled and her fake Batman. Uh, so that's actually, I was going to bring that up. That that's that's the that's the Nat Man and Rotten. Uh, from oh. Brand Eck, who fighting. So show fighting. us this one. I love this. Yeah, here's the cover of of the of the Spider-Man fighting Natman and Robin and Rotten. Knock furious agent of sheesh. Uh, oh my there's god. There's a lot of. Oh god, it's really ridiculous. Oh, apparently you did put. Who that Who says up. a comic book has to be good? <laughs> That's their catchphrase. Here, mm. here, here's a here's an interior page from this as well, just to sort of get the idea of, and it's very much meant to be the television Batman and and Rot Robin. Um, I did blow that out a bit, didn't I? There we are. Uh, J. So Stanley J. Jabo Jumpton. On this one. Yeah, it's really. I mean, like, it's yeah. <laughs> it's a. The fact that they could get away with this is kind of spectacular. I, I really don't even know how to, how to. I can't imagine this actually happening in the today's today's era. Mm -hmm. What is this? Nat Man and the Rotten Fan Club. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's supposed to be Betty Brant, but it's, uh, it's Miss Brunt instead. And look, she's once again doing a spot on Romita for Mary Jane. Uh, oh, yeah, and like Mary she Jane. She could apparently do a Romita Mary Jane in her sleep. Yeah, Like, that's look really, at that thing. Uh, that's I, I'm going to bring, right. okay, I'm going to show so this off because right. it's like, yeah, like out of nowhere in this book, let's just like fake a Romita. Caricature, caricature, caricature. Oh, by the way, oh, here's Romita. Oh, here's Romita. <laughs> Romita on a bench. Yeah, why not? I can do it all. Whatever. Yeah. Um, she also, later on they did some with uh, with likenesses. There's, I think I put one in there with John Lennon in the name. But she later was, on they she did was apparently it. very good at that. Mm. Uh, she, yeah, she got a lot so of like caricatures. Not yeah. or, and also and also just being able to like capture faces very well. Yeah. What was the main? It might be spoof. Oh. Um, also, if you've been reading Hulk for the last year, you'll know that there's the Immortal Hulk, and that cover mm -hmm. is almost an exact duplicate of this Marie Severin cover. Just wonderful. Oh, so like I mean, just wonderful. Oh, I put that one in too. <laughs> Thank you, Heritage Auctions or whoever. She just but like that's did that's everything. a classic Hulk cover that was then copied for the Immortal Hulk. If I if I remember it correctly. Uh, the other did you did you end up loading How to Be a Comic Book Artist by the way? Oh, I think I may have. Uh, if you have a nice copy, I have there I too. have a nice copy but, uh, here. If but if you've got, I, I believe How to Be a Comic Book Artist is up there. Which is such a wonderful look into her opinions of many things. It's it's such a it's such a nice. Uh, in the book, when they ask her about the different EC ones, she'll always comment on like, oh, that person kept his workspace very clean. You know, because that's the kind of thing you remember <laughs> about your coworkers. I think like, perhaps if it were rare, yeah. that would be the oh yeah the clean one. Uh, I don't know if how to, if how to become a artist. Okay, there it is. Yes. Yay! Uh, first of all, give a good appearance to your adoring fans, uh, hiding behind a fake picture. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Work in a pleasant, inspiring surroundings to keep your thoughts alive and creative. It looks amazing. Your supplies Angel. must be kept clean and neat. Remember, a poor craftsman blames his tools. They've been chewed on. Uh, keep a well-organized file for art reference. Oh, we'll almost get oh, there. Yeah, we'll almost get yeah. there. Yeah, there's the end of the pocket. Knife. What is this from? I don't actually know. Oh, where was this? People organize from? file for art reference. <laughs> the use of attractive live models is advisable. <laughs> Have a pleasant relationship with your editors. <laughs> Always schedule your working habits and be on time. Running with the portfolio. Be responsive, cooperative, and enthusiastic at the story conference for your next job. <laughs> <laughs> when your new assignment is fresh in mind, return home and, and get a good start in going right to the bar. Right to the bar, ordering <laughs> two drinks. <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen wow. that. It's funny. That's that's dark. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I like that he looks like uh, oh, Abel from from the from yeah. The house so I think I labeled it spoof, but it might be something else. Uh, but it does have Lydon in the name. I put too many pictures in this week. 
very stuck. Yeah, I know I'm very, I'm, see some, uh, you, it's, you, well, you every time it. you think you're done, you find out more stuff she did. We haven't even talked about the cat. Yep. Oh man, the cat, I reread the cat. Oh, oh. I reread the cat. I haven't read them in a couple years. I'm, I'm. They're, I, I'm, I'm, they're not as bad as, they're, they're not bad. They're actually fun. It definitely, it's definitely uh, shows its age, but it's quite, it's, it's still an interesting read. It was kind of a heartbreak reading through this because the author of cat, the cat, Linda Fight, gives an interview in here and I did not know much about her. Yeah. But apparently mm. like she fell in love with comics in college, basically cold called them and said, you guys should hire me, I'm awesome. Uh, <laughs> Flo Steinberg called her in her dorm room and sort of said, like, we can't offer you a job, but you seem wonderful. If you come to New York, look us up. Uh, so she did. Uh, got hired in as, like, an editorial assistant. Uh, bugged Roy Thomas for a year or two until she was like, I can write, give me a chance, give me a chance. Um, started doing shorter stories here and there. Uh, and, like, it's a little bit sad because after, like, uh, two years or so, something like that, essentially... She was just like, well, they, I asked for a raise and I wanted a bigger one than they could give me. So I left and I went to be art director for a magazine. Um, but it was like, in the meantime, she was there and, and co-created the character we now know as Greer uh, Grant. Uh, Nelson, what's her full name these days? Oh, man. Tigra. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, in her original incarnation in the early 70s, uh, when they were trying to uh, capture, like, to make books by women that women might mm -hmm. read. Um, they tried actually putting female talent on a small line of books, um, but they unfortunately, like, it was interesting to revisit this because it got canceled for poor sales after four issues, um, but I had forgotten until reading this, like, well, it was also, yeah, Hulk, yeah. also, Hulk got canceled for poor sales oh, after yeah. six issues and after went away six. for a year and a half. And that's why they created the Avengers was partially to justify the continued existence of the Hulk. They were like, <laughs> like, even back, th like, the uh, Marvel Studios will say, like, the biggest problem with the Hulk is that he, he's he's tricky to tell a story with like mm. you know um and he works better with a team is what the studio has always said and apparently back in the early 60s stanley felt the exact same way he's like ah it's poor sales uh we'll figure it out how about the avengers no one's using ant-man no one's using the wasp we can throw hulk in there uh, people are reading iron man that'll get kids to look at it more closely and thor thor gets kids mm. so it was just an excuse to continue using those characters, and now it's like the top movie of all time. I forgot, I, I forgot how the like the, the first of all the, the artists on on despite only being four issues, the artists kept changing. Yeah, she did the really first well, and as, nobody could remember she why she two, was think. taken off. But if it fits the pattern of the rest of these, it's because they wanted her to do some other work because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she was always doing seventy jobs. Um, she like they th one of them said left to be head colorist, but it, other sources seem to indicate that she already was head colorist, but she drew the first two issues, uh, one inked by uh, uh, I can bring, I have Tim Mooney, and uh, the f that was on the second one, and Wally Wood on the first one, because we were talking last week yeah, about Wallace Wood that she joked one. that he drew her like, he, he inked her like she was wrapped in saran wrap. Um, and it was interesting, because like they said the idea that she was a cat did not come from Linda Fight or Marie. It came from Stan, was like, well, she'll have like a cat outfit, and Linda Fight made fun of her, where she's like, oh, sure, so we have a lady hero and she's a cat and she gets in cat fights. But she sort of went into it and did the best she could, yeah. like, with the concept. Gave her a, a cool female mentor, mm -hmm. gave her, like, a, a setup that made her independent because she'd been recently widowed by this sort of pushy guy and was, like, finding her independence. Um, and, like, a, I don't know, you can tell me because you've read it more recently, mm. but I was surprised and, and intrigued by it, and I wish it had gone on. Um, I will say, like, immediately, like, Cat versus Owl is a is a very, and, like, Owsley is one of those, is one oh, of those villains. Oh, he's such a... Like, I, I, love, I love Owsley as a villain because he's just that guy that you send when you're like, I just, I just want, I, I want a character that I can just beat the crap out of. And this apparently while. was a Roy Thomas I idea that Linda Fight says where he was like, uh, how about the owl? And she's just like, yep, let's do it. Fine, that huh? sounds good. That sounds uh -huh. good. It, it, the, 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 the book had all of the, all, all of the ingredients of what would make like a classic Marvel book. The, the costume, when it hit, it really hit beautifully. When it mm. didn't hit beautifully, it didn't. It didn't need the, the, the logo on the chest was a terror. I don't know, like. <laughs> She added the sash so there'd be some element of flair because mm -hmm. you didn't have a tail and she was supposed to be cat-like. The, the sash mm -hmm. was a good point. I'll also say a very uh, Wolverine, uh, Wolverine-like mask. I actually really this like before, or, before or, Wolverine. Uh, probably around the exact same time he's getting invented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, slightly probably, before. What year is it? Seventy-two uh, or seventy-four. I have a button for that. 
Um, oh, no, it's 72, 72, 73. 72, so this would have been just a little bit before Wolverine. A little bit before mm. Wolverine. Yeah. But, and like, and you can see there, especially on panels where you kind of get a really, the really good, like, the way that they do the, the these eyes look a little, it's a little odd and, and a little alien at some point. They're a little Dave Cockermy. But the thing that happens that's really great, and I'm going to try and find an image of it, is that, and the reason that this mask works so well is that you then put that character in shadow and you just highlight the green. Mm. And it is really striking. It's almost like she's really good at thinking about how color works. Yeah. I love, I'm like, there we go, there we go. That was one of the, see. When it when it pops, it pops really well, um, and it's and it's actually it, I mean like it's a fun classic read. It, it definitely it, it definitely has some some. Look at that great silhouette. Oh my God, the owl and the pussy. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Welcome to it. Uh, the, the the places where and it's it definitely it shows its age, but not as badly as other things do by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. Where's that thing? I found a brilliant one of her hiding in the shadow. It might have been in issue one. Um, I'll dig up. But yeah, I mean, like, and it's interesting. It's it's a character that has not, in my opinion, gotten a very well. And so she she went out away. But as the as this book pointed out, like, mm. not every character has like. Yeah, she only had four issues of her own book, but she had two solid afterlives. Mm. Um, one in the form, I mean, and it's so moody and beautiful. Oh yeah, and uh, like, and every artist brought a new vibe to it. Like, yeah. like every time they switched things, it got it got a different kind of interesting. So this character ended up. Uh, because it was just before that little supernatural boom where we get Ghost Rider and we get a bunch of the other like horror stuff coming back in f fashion in the 70s, she gets brought back about a year, year and a half later, two years, um, and turned into the character we now know as Tigra, uh, where she becomes an actual cat, mm -hmm. essentially, uh, due to a blood transfusion thing. Um, and this... So I, I love well the... Well done the, the with the inks from so Wally Wood here. Look at what happens with the eyes when she's in the shadow. Yeah. Like that's really cool. I that really like that cool. vibe of just of just having the shiny eyes. In the and her very first mission is like confronting and freaking out a dude who can't handle her being powerful. I think she defeats him because he's unwilling to be touched. Yeah, a very interesting sort of proto woman's yeah. lib, like I th like I you think... can't handle my actual presence. Yeah, um, and, and and like scares him so much. I think he shoots himself. Mm. Uh, he was so afraid of my raking claws that he turned his gun back on himself, yeah. desperately afraid that I would touch him. He took. Well, the coward's way yeah. out of well, the well, guy Well, welcome to, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's like, that's kind of the push there. It's 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 a really, I mean, like, I, I really enjoyed it. I ended up reading all four, even though I, I Did I you find the letter in number three? Did they put the letter page in? I didn't check for the letter. I never checked for the letter Do you page. have, oh, do you have it here? Because we should just pull I, it up. I always have it here, um, yeah. So. God, and you can see how, like, and like a brand new artist just brings, I mean, like, you can see it just changes, uh. And they, they never published issue five, but Ramona Frayden, the legendary artist who worked Look for DC, that. did number five. Wow. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to find a... Oh. The credits on this? Oh, God, look at the, oh, look at the... Chromatic. Chromatic, okay, okay. Let's just have to have a moment of the color, uh, color on this piece. Look at what's happening in the, in the, in like the rainbow swirl that's happening in the, uh, in the, uh, in the net there. I love it. Wow. That's amazing. Ah, oh, it's just so much happening. Um, yeah, let's see. This one would be... Uh, Patty Greer, mm -hmm. um, I, I think, eventually known by a different name as well. Um, Roy Thomas is still editing these. It's interesting. Bill Bill Everett was mm -hmm. did some work on this one too for the did the inks on this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I can I can see the like letters in. No! they did not put the letters in. Why? What happens at the? Because I think I told this story last week, but I will never stop finding it funny that in I think issue three of the cat. This is. This is what yeah. I was reading at the shop when I had that one letter knock my socks off, uh, because it was like I'm tired of boring women who don't have any perspective in their stories. I want something with some fire, so I love your magazine. Dear young Frankie from Montpelier, oh, Vermont. Oh, this yeah. is this, this is, a is Frank the book Miller. that Boy, Frank Miller wrote into when he was fifteen. That makes a lot of sense. Looking at those Wallywood so, inks, probably in combination with the legitimately spirited and interesting female character. So what you're set saying off is, things. I could Marie definitely Severin see that. Severin led to Frank Miller. <laughs> a little bit. And Marie, that which, <laughs> which the syllogism there is, Marie Severin gave us the Dark Knight Returns. A little bit. She was a piece of it. That's a long. That's a long walk, but that's a walk I'll take. I mean, what we call a hypothetical syllogism. The mm -hmm. books that Ooh. you write your uh, your fan <laughs> letters to are usually ones that stuck with you on some level. Yep. Um, so the cat uh, by Marie Severin gave us uh, the bat. <laughs> gave us the bat. The cat led to the reinvention of the bat. 
um, or mm -hmm. at least was part of that that beautiful and, and unpredictable tapestry that is art and the art world. Uh, so we we would l I'd love to do one like that was part of a small a short and short lived line of comics uh, with that can sort I keep of mission this book forever. Um, I can you. get you one, but you can't. Nah, right. I'll, sure. I'll just keep this one. You're going to love you. it. You're going to love it. So we know much. where he sleeps. It will be okay. Do you? It, like, I, I, I. Oh, man. I have you tagged <laughs> with the tracker. I had you tagged with the tracker before you were married, there's, man. There's so much good <laughs> stuff. That actually it, wouldn't surprise the opening Since chapters, there will be Brawl, I've had you tagged with the tracker, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Luigi looks shifty. We better tag him. <laughs> we better tag that Luigi. Yeah. <laughs> that Luigi, though. I've had the Luigi <laughs> and Mario both tagged. It's true. She uh, had some high school friends that she stayed <laughs> close to her whole life. So the opening chapter here has these wonderful cartoons of like, her friend literally became a nun. So there's a picture of both of them running away from uh, like, they're circa the time when Comics Code was disrupting all of their lives. She has an actual cartoon of her and her friend who is a nun, because that's what she did after they both graduated, yeah. uh, running away from a gang of school kids throwing snowballs. And it's like the corrupting effects of comics on children like exhibit B uh, and, and like it's just such a beautiful like it's just a document because she made a little cute cartoon for her friend of them both running away from the the traumatized youth of today uh, oh good god and they're just so priceless much. There's so much in here. Like her, her capacity. For oh, there it style. is. Oh yeah, there it is. There oh, it is. please show it off. Yeah. It was there just like go. a Christmas card she made for her buddy. Um. Up at the top there. There, I'm going to move my fingers. There we go. Yep. Again, yep. thank you to Tomorrow's for putting out this wonderful book. And thank you, Chief, for uh, mm -hmm. flowing with us there. Some examples but of the evil effects of comics on our children. Hmm? Have faith, Sev. Have faith, is her friend the nun, who she says the snowballs won't even hit her. And then Marie drawing herself in the corner here. Um, Getting hit by all the every, snowballs. Every snowball. Yeah, she's got like hit by 10 snowballs while her buddy's magically immune. But like, yeah, the, the poor little children poisoned by the evil effects of comics. Like, what? How does this exist? Thank you, lady who kept them for all these years <laughs> because her buddy was just a real talented artist. Like, ah, uh, it's ridiculous. Wow. I want to I want to make sure I get this right before I show it off. But this is this is what I think it is, right? Like, is this a? I believe it is. Um, I want to make sure that, because I believe this was her contribution. This was a book. Um, From a series we love very much. Uh, called, uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, it's uh, Dignifying, Dignifying science. science, Stories About Women in Science, and it's a series of shorts. Jim Ottaviani wrote uh, several science-based graphic novels that I love very much, um, so I don't know if this is actually related to those or it's just his name that I'm leaping at. Okay, it, it, is, it is the one I was looking at. I just want to make sure before I show this off, because it's so, um, I find it, so uh, um, impressive to me that like uh, there's a, a, an epilogue two-page piece in this uh, the the, uh, the the Mary Curie uh, Mary Curie uh, bit, Aww. and let's let's I just I'm like excited to see her let's see her do Eddie Campbell for a minute. Oh uh, yes. So like let's like oh wow look let me let me just like pull out an an, an Eddie Cam an Eddie Campbell uh, black let me also turn my my screen down so you yes, can see this. Just adjust the. There we go, that's better. So. Yeah, here's here's just an entirely wow. different different vibe. Um, yeah, look at oh here I'll turn it there we go. Yeah, wow. let's, let's just do that. Why don't we? What can't she do? It's it's crazy. It's just crazy. And this would have been uh, Jim Taviani still working now, so this would have been much later in her career, right? Mm -hmm. I guess the, there were well, a the couple. Well, the like this is like I want to say '90s, like the dif dignifying women. I have a button for that. And science, I, I like '90s or early 2000s. I want to say. Ah, uh, my button was useless. Carlos Pete McNeil's in it, and she's relatively. Oh wait a minute. Recent. Yeah, 2000, 2000, 2002. Nicely done. Yep, yep, yep. Hoo ha! Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a. Uh, so that's. Oh. I mean, like, just let's like, here. Let's just like have a completely other style, just in the back pocket. For a two-page episode. And she apparently she she did a bunch of eventually she landed in Marvel's special projects division. So she did like uh, the, if you wanted an official coloring book or some advertising material. Toilet or paper. A short-lived uh, line was that a real thing? That was a real thing. What? I had that as a child. What? Yeah, uh, Marvel toilet paper. Marvel, Marvel toilet paper. What? Yeah. What? No, I don't understand what you what part of this you don't understand. What? Marvel. Uh huh. Toilet paper. What? Okay, so paper <laughs> paper for a toilet. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. You know toilet paper? Uh huh. But Marvel. Yeah, but with Marvel stuff on it. 
what? Like, like, <laughs> like don't, don't, don't squeeze the Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I could do this like, all day. <laughs> like, like, like there's one one to go and another uh-huh. one to go and uh-huh. they're both sitting on a couch and like they both love, like love their toilet I'm gonna paper. See, I'm gonna see if I can find a picture what? of this because this was the thing I had as a kid and it blew my goddamn mind. It's so, okay, so two demon bears, uh-huh. right? They're on a couch uh-huh. and the new mutants are like outside and the uh-huh. demon bears are like, we need to use the bathroom. We could use some toilet paper and they're like, oh, don't squeeze the, don't, it's a demon bear. We have European paper. viewers and they have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, no. okay, mm-hmm. I'm about to show you a thing that is going to like change your life. <laughs> are you prepared for the, uh, uh, all right. I always wanted this. I never had. Oh, we, I had this as a kid. As a kid, it was the, mom and dad. It was the. Best I always thing wanted ever. this. Um, there it is. Oh, never mind. I didn't have to work. Thank you, Chief. Yes, you could read comics in the bathroom uh-huh. on the toilet. In uh-huh. the toilet paper. Uh huh. Uh yeah. And apparently she did those. She was the one who created the, uh, the, like the an the, original the, story. They actually were like, no, no, no. This isn't just clip art, y'all. It was a very impressive story. Uh, Spider Man was was uh, chasing uh, chasing a group of thieves who had, who had uh, actually uh, ironically robbed a a bathroom in a police department. And <laughs> for, for most of the story, the police had nothing to go on. But um, sh- that was a joke. That was a joke. That was. Oh! Go on, Joe. Wow. I apologize. Wow. So As she to- apparently, when someone in the book says, like, she was on a Muppet Babies uh, thing. Comic. Short, oh, yeah, she was on weekly. a Muppet Babies comic. And, so, and I think it was Ramita who was like, the, the real tragedy is he's like, they should have picked her for the newspaper cartoon. She would have left an absolutely oh. legendary run on that. Uh, according to, I, her I'm friends so appreciating. Oh my God, it's up there already. I'm so sorry. Oh God. It's my favorite <laughs> genre is other people saying how much they loved Marie, which by the way, the second you go digging will just be other people saying how much they loved oh Marie. Oh my God, I forget. Like I had like, this when I was like five. Is. I was, so, I mean like this is oh, ancient. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Oh. Oh Wait, my by, god! By who and what? What were the credits on there? Uh, go back. Yeah, those back were the writers' way? credits. Uh, who? Who? Uh, go back one. Who are they? Hmm? Oh man, that's the leader, by Jim. Salakrup and. Uh, Michael Nibbins. Nibbins. Niggins. Mike. I don't know who either of these yeah. people yeah. are. And oh no. So this could be her. Maybe she did the box. For the the tissues, I think I think she was actually I think that might just be the right, but I, I know they did nice. several different ones of this as well. Okay, maybe it was like a follow up or um, either way. This is incredible. Yeah, this was a this was a thing listed on her on her uh, on her credits, and I was like, oh my god, I remember that. <laughs> I remember being enthralled. <laughs> she continued at Marvel until basically their '90s bankruptcy uh, was in layoffs, mm-hmm. and she'd been there for like 30 odd years. Um, she did little bits of work here and there. She she recolored DC stuff. Oh, no. uh, she did some work on coloring Batman Adventures, which was really nice. She did some penciling for some indies. I, the, what are you I, looking up now? I, I, I my thumb slipped because I looked up Marvel toilet paper, and that happened. And I, and I oh my what? god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, there's a mule near that you can put in your wall and it holds toilet paper. Okay, I love we gotta, it. We got to We got to go away. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Our that conversation got, has gone. Has gone into that holes. direction. <laughs> um, I'm seeing if there's any other art that I pulled from hers that I like. Absolutely have to have a conversation. Oh about. yeah. Um, other than that, is there anything you see that I pulled that I have forgotten to bring up that you're really sad I did not get to? Um, if you can find the one with the John Lennon likeness, oh. I would still like to share. Oh yeah, it. some of mm-hmm. her covers are amazing. Oh yeah, the, this 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 uh, Namor is a. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't even talk about. She did a run on Submariner. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did that run. She did a giant like, giant like issue wide fight of Hulk and Mariner. Here's a so pinup Mariner. of Yoda, which is a real thing. Oh my God. Yep, that's just that's like, and that, that's a very Hensony Yoda right there. I gotta yeah. say. I like the way the color shift. Ooh, Portrait of a Jedi Master. Mm. What else did I put in there? Um. I don't even really know how to explain that, and I have no context for it, and it's a bit much. <laughs> uh, I've seen this image before. Yeah, it's that's Marie Severin. Yeah, that's the Sergeant Fury's Lonely Hearts Club band. Oh my God. That's, oh that's my from, uh, God. yeah, this is just the same. You're just going to end up the in other pictures of humor me. Yeah. magazines. Mm. <laughs> um. Let's see. I love the the color guides are just amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it's so much. It's so much, and she was so good. Is, is there any? Is, are there any questions in the that. chat room oh, that we should probably uh, now that you've relinquished the book again and you'll never see it again? I'll never see it again. Mm. Um, Fraggle Rock. She worked on. Oh, Fraggle um. Rock. Hi guys, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Arch Magnets uh, says this conversation has gone to shit. <laughs> 
Yeah. That, well done. Well oh. Done. Took you a second, did you? Yeah. yeah. yeah I saw you say you haven't. Uh, so Liz is saying 10 minutes left. Do we want to do oh, no. the topic? topic? Is it time for the topic? And then I'll you go know, back to some questions. I'm ready for some topic. Uh, is the topic in here, Liz? Is this the topic? Yeah, real, yeah. Is it, is it highlighted? Yeah, yeah, highlighted. Yeah, I don't know what blue. it is, but it is, there's blue highlight. All right. I just want to make sure I'm reading the right thing. Is this a thing that's, is something about to happen to us? Yeah, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is a fun one. Okay. Uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me gird my, gird uh, my loins. Yeah. Here we are. Do you think that it didn't terrify you when I read it? Is it? Oh, no, every topic terrifies me, Liz. Guys, she did an ad for a, fair, uh, a show she showed up at in 1995. And it went, oh my, is this where the wonderful Maurice Devon is appearing? I thought she was dead. <laughs> oh, Loki. Oh. She was like, don't, silly, don't. she gave me five bucks. She gave us all five bucks <laughs> to show up. Oh my God. Oh, that's funny. That's oh, no. beautiful. Uh, okay, do you want to do the intros, Ms. Amy, or, or, or shall I? Oh God, this is when she got in her uh, caricature fight with one of the editors. And oh. There's so much more Marie Severin. Oh my God, oh But wow. it is time for our five minute topic here on the Wednesday Club. I'm Amy Dallin, this is Talon Gabby, this is Mackie. And Mackie. what are we talking about today? Uh, so, Star Pilot 6, the topic is the comic character of your choice oh, no. retires oh, no. to create a restaurant themed around them and their exploits. Oh my God. What do they call the restaurant and what's their signature dish? Oh no. Uh, so, uh, oh, no. this is our five minute topic. We got five minutes on the clock. Oh no. Uh, I'm not allowed to say Doctor Strange, but that's all I want to say because. What, what would he do with his restaurant, though? Come I mean, on. it would be the Sanctum. Like, it would be okay. the Sanctum, and like, you know. You, like, need, a, you need a good pun in there. What, what would he? Uh, what, uh, uh, I don't. I don't know the the dish of Agamotto. The, like, the Sanctum soup plantation, or like what? I don't know. <laughs> sanctum soup plantation. Sanctum soup. I like it. You got to do something, man. Yeah. Sorry. These are theme, theme restaurants have to pun. Oh my god, I'm so bad at pun. puns. I, 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 uh, the older I get, the, the worse I get. The Sanctum Soup Plantation. I'm so sorry, oh my it's god, terrible. That's the worst. I mean, Awful. obviously That's Booster not my answer. Burgers. No, it's not. I, it's not your Obviously answer. Booster Burgers. Uh, I mean, like, is yes. that, is that a real that's thing already? Like, I mean, probably. Uh, Booster Gold would, in fact, open a chain of restaurants based oh, on yeah. exploits. Some mm. of which would be fictional. Uh, <sighs> Most of which would probably be But like, who relatively would be, fictional. Who shouldn't do this but would? Mm. Probably Doctor Doom. Okay. Mm. Doctor Doom would not be a very good restaurant owner. It'd be it'd be let, uh, let very in food, and no one. And likes, no, one no one likes, likes let very in food. Oh food. no! And, he would, <laughs> and, and like he would smash everything. Yeah. Like he would he it would, would all be Doombots. 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 Served by Doombots. Yeah. Give uh, your order name. <laughs> oh, order only let very. Tremble in. before the grill of doom. Yeah. Hey, oh, oh my God. God. Tremble before the so grill sorry. of doom. I'm so sorry. No, no one's um, harming me. Um, let's see. oh god, I'm Night so Nightcrawler's restaurant would be terrible because it would smell very bad in there. Oh, yeah. all the time. He would just call it Bamps. Bamps. Oh. Bamps is pretty, is pretty. I would eat a Bamps. Bamps I would eat a Bamps. I would go to. I would yeah. definitely, like, I would definitely eat a Bamps. Yeah, it might, it might get the wrong crowd who thinks that it stands for something else and it's like, oh, oh no, this no, is Nightcrawler's bar. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, mm. oh, ooh, ooh, you know what would be kind of a badass mm. restaurant? What? Mm. Ghost Rider's restaurant. Oh. What? Why? No, because it would be like a like a it'd be like a really awesome like trucker sort of like style like an awesome truck like bikers okay. bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it could be themed as a bikers bar, and like you have like because he was also a stunt man, mm -hmm. so you would have like some of the stunts that he did on top of like all of his exploits. But all of his exploits are like really freaking metal, like. <laughs> like blazers or something. Ooh, blazers! blazers. Yeah. yeah. Everyone would have to wear a blazer. No, no, everyone no. has to wear like a cool Definitely. leather coat. Cool leather coat. Chain. Never mind. Yeah. And like be... then they have like like the the cooks all have like fake flaming heads. Really spicy chicken. Wings. And once a month, Ghost Rider appears. The chicken wings are really spicy, and there's no meat on them. It's just bone. Can there be like <laughs> one chef who does like a you know like like at a grill where they're performing and they make big fire things? Uh, like... Oh, like the Benihana yes. Benihana yeah, grill. Like Benihana something grill. like yeah. that. Would there be oh yeah. The, do you know? Oh yeah. Like... No, everything is like flame broiled. <laughs> and all and whatever animal you're eating, you are assured that it was guilty of something. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Ah. Oh, I would God. like I'm I, they're not a superhero, but I would eat at like a restaurant-based House of Mystery and House of Secrets. I would oh. like House of Mystery meat would be weird. But don't think I want to eat that. How, House of Mystery. What are we eating? I don't know. I don't know. House the of mystery. Secrets. What are we eating? <laughs> we can't tell you. You don't be like no, but I just need the allergen info, please. please. <laughs> sorry, we can't tell and, you. Uh, you might die, <laughs> and then you'll go to the House of Mystery. Yeah. 
Oh, oh God, <laughs> that's so terrifying. Yeah. Who else should open a restaurant? Oh man, this is this is rough. Um, I mean like Wolverines, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a hot dog no. place. It would be a shish kebab restaurant. Uh, yeah, it could be a shish Wolverine kebab. Kebabs. Wolverines. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> yes. No? I mean, yes. I mean, no. Wolverine would be a hot dog and beer kind of guy. I mean, yeah. the truth is he would get his friends from Japan to serve him the stuff he actually wanted to eat, and it would end up as some kind of weird, very trendy Asian fair. fusion restaurant. Fair. Fusion restaurant. Yeah, fair. Be food on sticks. I don't know. I don't think Wolverine would go for trendy at all. I like, can... He would accidentally <gasps> be trendy, but like... He would He would never go for trend, but he could accidentally be trendy. I, I, <laughs> I, Iceman could open like 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 a like a raw food like a raw food restaurant where nothing yeah. cooked. Yeah, everything just. Oh, yeah. it's all raw. It's all raw. It's just just raw food. Everything is cold. Uh, what what like would the Hellfire Club ever open their own restaurant? I mean, I mean. They have their own kind of eating establishments, but yeah, like, they, what they, would their signature? Yeah, they have they have an irritating strip club already. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh man. There have to be like who's canonically a chef? There have to be some. This that's a good question. Who is? I mean. I mean, Wong is technically the best. Wong, Wong, Wong and Jarvis are the he two biggest serve, chefs. He wouldn't serve strangers. No, he wouldn't. He doesn't care he can whether barely you serve eat friends. or not. But yeah, Jarvis would open a pretty, Jarvis, Jarvis, pretty awesome I would, restaurant. I would open I bet I would Alfred would open a pretty good restaurant, too. Yeah. And his restaurant would just be called Alfred's, and that would be cool. I would eat at Jarvis. I would eat at Alfred's or at Jarvis's. Jarvis's and Alfred's could be like a... Like Jarvis an and Alfred's. 24 it's hours. It's the crossover restaurant that we've always wanted. And with Make that... And that's our... That's our time. And that's our time. And I think actually that's a great idea. Yeah. Jarvis and Alfred's. Or, 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 J and Alf R's. J and R's. Oh, J and R. J and R's. J and R's diner. A. No. J, J and A. J and J J and R's. No, no J and A. R? What's the R? Oh, I don't Ralph, know. Ralfred? Uh, it's, it's Ralfred? Jarvis and Ralfred? J and A's. This has been our five minute topic here on the Wednesday Club. <laughs> you can see us every Wednesday on twitch.tv so slash Geek and Sundry and on Project Alpha. I'm Amy Dallin. I'm Talison Jaffe. And I'm Matt Key. And now we're all hungry. Now, we're, now, now I just want to go in J and R's. <laughs> oh I was thinking J R. I think. KB is. Tibbs says I'm the very best at what I grill, and what I grill isn't, isn't very, very nice. nice. <laughs> the restaurant review was going well for about half of it. Okay, so I didn't AJ's. put the likenesses in there, Ooh. man. Uh, Jay and Pickering me. says I still say Shazam opens the Lightning Lounge and serves. Oh, that's really Solomon. good. Oh, Billy, that's Batson's funny. Battered, uh, uh, Billy Batson's battered. Uh, Billy Batson's uh, battered. Halibut. Battered halibut. <laughs> Billy, Billy Batson's battered D beef. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to double. I'm trying to yeah. See if I can finish the alliteration. Uh, well, beef finishes it. Yeah, Billy Batson's see. battered burgers. Thank burgers. You, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Battered burger bar. Yeah. Battered burger bar. Yeah. The taste. Battered of burger and know. beer bar. I'm trying to think of some some. Billy bad. Batson's battered burger and beer bar. bar. Yeah. They oh, eventually... Beast Burger Bar from Jeff M. Well done. Animal Man's Vegan Bar, Fuffy Butt. Oh, yeah, that's solid. Oh, man. The chat is filled with really good suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think Snip what, if anything, we've neglected Aries. to share with you all uh, from her. 31 just... Iceman flavor. Oh, it just I would, I didn't I would also, the... I would say I would eat at a squirrel uh, girl pie shop. At a what? Squirrel girl pie shop. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Squirrel girl in a pie shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we got two minutes left. We should probably uh, <laughs> yeah. Are there Let's any are there any other I didn't comments see or questions? Any the... questions. Um... <laughs> oh man, there's a lot. People have a lot of really really good. Uh, Fing Fang Foom canonically a chef? That is a question. I don't, I don't know. Think so. I'm gonna look that up though. Um, I I'm very excited by this. I also think Machine Man possibly is canonically a chef. Just oh, a very good one. Garth McMurray Galactus would have a great all you can eat buffet. Oh. Oh, snap. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that wow. that's we were It would just be called hungers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or the hunger. Yep. I, I, that's horrifying and great. <laughs> hmm? They're all planet themed dishes. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah, and then the, the unlimited drinks would be the nullifiers. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just have to one up it. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> What's in an ultimate nullifier? Um, well, uh, that's the house. Speaking of the House of Secrets, uh, I would imagine that would just be like a heavy, a heavy mix grain. We used to have this stuff called Death Punch at Ren Fair, which was just a mixture of all clear grain alcohol that we could get a hold of. What? And then you add in fruit, and then you would have a Dixie cup specifically because you had to finish the Dixie cup before it ate through the bottom. What? 
uh, that sounds like a it is drink. legitimately that sounds it like is a legitimately drink. a miracle i'm still alive <laughs> we that's not the first time that's ever been no said. death punch man thank you guys for coming on this topic today it, thank I, you she's oh been my one god of my heroes this, I was, for years i was I'm looking so, forward to this like, all week like this same. was like it's, this was my whole week it's what i texted you it was like i i'm not gonna have a lot to say but i cannot wait to learn oh man i went like i had you. so much fun like going back and reading some of like the books of my youth my youth your uh, youth my youth uh, well, Liz, question: Can we say what we're doing for next week, or is that locked is it down? Still locked is, down. Is that it's still locked down. We're, we're next holding. Week's, okay. Next week might be crazy, crazy, uh, crazy pants. Yeah, next week might be awesome, but I don't. We can't really say anything. Or it just might be us, which is pretty cool. No, the show will be terrible, no matter what. No matter we're, what, yeah. it's just gonna be us rambling. <laughs> We, we may might, have we, sp- we may have a, a, a pretty cool guest. So kind of kind of a cool guest. We're waiting to see if they lock down. If if the uh, if the planets align. Th- I, I think they will. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for taking us on a tour. Of no, I'm so excited. I, I'm gonna remember I really seven do more want things to later, get that love, book. Like it's it's oh, it's so great. And because she really is like the imbo- like she kind of is a time capsule for. A, gig- a very major period in comics history. So anyway, we're getting the wrap-up sign yep. from Producer Liz. So yeah, we're we're gonna take a quick break and come back for uh, uh for what's the show that you we, do? For, it's for called Weave. We, we, and then we, 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 we do the third part of her story, and we're so yes. excited that we get one yes. more week because she's an amazing GM, and we're gonna have so much fun. Love Aliza. Stay tuned for Weave, Stay and we'll weave. see you next week with a great show, no matter what. Same Nat time. Same, Same Nat channel. Did you say Nat? Nat, because it was Nat Man. Oh Nat. Oh,